I want to welcome you guys to the 2023 T-Shirt Design Trends webinar. Uh, my name is Dave from Transfer Express. I have Mike behind the scenes answering chats. So if you have any questions whatsoever, let us know. Um, I'm going to try to stay to, we have a lot to cover today, and I know that we're going to try to stay around an hour. Just a fair warning, we're probably going to go over an hour. So if you have to dip at any time, uh, you don't get the interactivity. So you do just like get to see the slides at post uh, at post webinar. But if you could hang out with us while you're working, have us on uh, almost listening to me like a podcast. But if you come up with any questions, let us know right there. Um, and so, yes, we're going to get started right here action packed. Uh, and I'm so super excited with my design background. I absolutely love talking about t-shirt design trends. We're going to talk about some ways to make money for you and your business. And I'll even demo some uh, of the services we have here at Transfer Express that you may not know about uh, that's going to help you and your business uh, print definitely more efe efficiently and hopefully pack some more profit into your uh, pocket this year. I will say one thing before we get too far out of the bat. Uh, if you registered and you attended this right now, I absolutely applaud you. And I could almost guarantee that 2023 is going to be the best year yet for your hobby, your business, your side hustle, whatever it's going to be. Your dedication to just showing up today says so much about how much you are passionate about your business and how much you care. And I care just I'm hoping just as much as you do, because I really, truly want to see you succeed. And we're going to talk about some solutions here. Of course, we're going to cover some Transfer Express products. Uh, but if at any time you have any questions, let me know right there in the chat section. And I'm going to try to answer it for you. Or Mike could catch it if I'm in the middle of a demo or trying to get through stuff here. Um, I see some questions. Yeah, Veronica, this one will be recorded. Uh, and Evelyn asked, when is the show in Atlantic City? Impressions is uh, March 23rd through 25th. But let's get started. Let's jump right into our agenda here today. And we're going to be talking about a ton of stuff, okay? Uh, if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. Uh, but I do not want to take up your entire day. I want you guys to still be printing. Uh, but I want to be as helpful and as thorough as possible. It's what these webinar formats really are. For. I absolutely enjoy them. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys, too. Uh, it, do enjoy them as well. We have a uh, almost, I think, maybe record-breaking crowd here with us today. So if this is your first webinar, welcome. I'm very, very happy to help you in any way that I can. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Let's get started. Roz says, let's get started right there in the chat section. So let's look at some of the agenda of what we're going to be covering today. Number one, the meat and potatoes, the best selling and trending designs that we've seen carried over from 2022 and the new stuff that we've seen on the rise here in 2023. There's probably some stuff that I don't have a crystal ball, right? I just have over a decade in the apparel decorating industry and probably about uh, 15 to 16 years essentially in like freelance designing or the graphic design community. So uh, I've seen a lot of things come and go in trends uh, like those 2008 side prints. Yeah, I'm kind of glad those are still gone, just like the Jinko jeans from the 90s. Although we are going to be talking about some 90s stuff here today. Um, so then we're going to talk about new products and services that can help you win sales. So this is uh, going to relate to you and your business. And that's going to be kind of peppered throughout our entire presentation here today. I'm going to talk about e easy artwork creation tips, so ways that you could really boost the efficiency in your artwork. I always say all the time, uh, and with my experience being a designer as well, a lot of times your customer is going to come to you without an idea and go, I trust you, man. You're the pro. I'll know it when I see it. And that usually is not sustainable because you're going to dump a couple hours into researching or you're going to ask them some questions that they're not going to really take the time to answer. And then you're going to pitch these ideas after sp spending two hours designing and they're going to go, ah, no, I was really thinking more something like this that they should have just told you in the first place. But then they give you a Google image and you've already wasted two hours down the drain. And if you're billing your customer for design hours at the industry standard $50 an hour, that's a hundred bucks they're into it now. And that's probably going to turn them away if you're like, I'm not going to do anything unless you give me a hundred bucks to pitch out some ideas. I'm going to teach you how to get over that. So uh, some really easy ways to, uh, to, to pitch artwork to your customers in a very efficient manner where you could almost essentially use it as a value add for yourself that you're doing it for free. Because no other competitor out there 
is doing it for free. So that's how you're going to win more customers too. We're going to kind of pepper in throughout the entire time here. I want to mention apparel and ink colors. Uh, and if at any time I start really focusing on the designs and get away from that, somebody remind me in the chat and be like, hey, Dave, you said you were going to talk about some apparel styles too or some colorways. Uh, and I absolutely will. Just like these crop tops over to the left-hand side, something that is really coming out. It's going to relate to one of our design trends that we talk about in the kind of Y2K uh, kind of scope of things. Uh, but crop tops are back. We saw them on a huge rise, especially for women. Well, almost exclusively for women. I don't look that good in a crop top. Although, you know what? I would try it. I would rock it, you know? But <laughs> they're not necessarily made for men. Uh, but a lot of those women's fashion styles are starting to see the crop tops, even all the way into crew neck sweatshirts and even like hoodies and stuff are starting to have that slimmer cut as like the high-waisted jeans and pants and leggings have become incredibly popular. You see all of these wholesale suppliers and manufacturers kind of adapting to the trends as well, which is one thing I do want to mention while we're talking about apparel is any time that a uh, Sanmar, SNS, or Bella Canvas, uh, American Apparel, or Gildan releases new styles, it takes a lot of planning to actually get those designs concepted, produced, approved, and then made into a bulk capacity where they could be sold wholesale. So every time you see a new style, it's something to take note of. We saw this with all of those crystal dye, the tie dyes, all of those uh, those dyed colorways last year. As it rose in popularity, there was only maybe one or two brands carrying pre-tie-dyed or uh, bleached garments. And then almost every single apparel supplier by the end of the year had something in their line. And if you saw that trend early on, we were able to communicate that because that was something that I saw that was like, whoa, look out for this. This is coming. And then sure enough, springtime-ish last year, slammed into all that tie-dye and the crystal dye stuff. We might see a little bit of it still here hanging around this year too. Uh, and then at the end, I want to cover some selling and marketing tools that's going to help your business succeed. So if you guys, Michelle, Dave is awesome. That's an awesome comment. Thank you. You are awesome too. <laughs> Oh, Tony, what, what's all this? What's what's all the, the love here for Dave? Come on, let's talk about design trends. I'm flattered. I'm blushing now. Oh, no. Um, and I see John in there, too. John was out at uh, at Long Beach in the pro day, uh, was able to hang out with us and get hands on with a whole bunch of products uh, in a full service printing business John has. But it's awesome to see you here, John, uh, as well. I think somebody was mentioning Kathy Taylor. Kathy Taylor here, too. Uh, one of uh, my faves. Uh, and uh, we met Kathy down at the Impressions Expo in Fort Worth this past past year, got to hang out a little bit, get hands on with products, learn a little bit more about her business uh, and the, all the work that she makes her husband do. More power to you, Kathy. I hope he's not listening, right? Just you? No. <laughs> and no, it was awesome. I love getting out on the show and talking with you guys. Uh, and, you know, any challenges or successes to your business, I could take I could take that on and, and try to help work those through with you. So that's what that's all, that's what I'm here for. So our first trend before we move on to our real trends uh, is just the one here in this agenda. We're going to see text mentioned a lot. It is really, really popular and always has been to put on T-shirts. Of course, you want to be talking about a messaging, but more than ever, uh, kind of text only designs have really been getting popular. With, say, like our Ultra Color Max product that I have pointed out right here, uh, you could actually clip photos inside text and in, say, Photoshop or any other design software and be able to order them almost at any quantity. So something like this with Ultra Color Max, able to produce this absolutely no problem. You don't have to send it to a direct-to-garment printer. You don't have to uh, do anything weird uh, with any other screen printing or nine screen, nothing like that. There's no setup, uh, no setup fees even, and there's no setup for you other than turn your heat press on. So we're going to talk about some really cool stuff today. Let's get right into it here. Uh, and we're going to jump right into our trends with text-based designs, right? So primarily, we're going to be talking about three different kinds of text-based designs here today as our trends. Number one, the minimalist. Number two, the retro revival, as I like to say. You're going to hear me say retro or vintage or throwback a ton today, and we see it year after year uh, in both fashion uh, and apparel designs as well. So that's going to be a big theme that's going to be coming through uh, this year and extending into next year. It was from last year. Uh, there's always going to be some sort of throwback vintage vibe uh, that the kids are pushing now. You know, it, I was just on a call with Bella Canvas and Wes, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Wes from the Bella Canvas channel, but he was joking that like, uh, you, you know, we learned the mistakes back in the early 2000s of how goofy we looked. Uh, and the kids now who are all getting into this, we're like going to look back on, they're going to look back in 20 years and go, Man, what were we thinking? 
And all we could say is we're going to be there to say, I told you so, right? <laughs> but we have to embrace these trends and these all everything going on right as they happen. And as an apparel decorator, you can latch onto that, earn a ton of business and put a ton of profit in your pocket uh, from being in tune with these trends. I'm not going to show anything too crazy out of the box today. Uh, not like 2002 Britney Spears. Love you, Britney. Uh, but we all know 2002 was a rough patch for all of us in terms of fashion and style. So <laughs> we're going to talk about creative type two. So uh, our third base, back on track, Dave. The third type here uh, of our creative type, or our third type, our third type of creative type is going to be creative type. So you see that a little bit more here to the, like the bottom right hand side. Maybe I can make my picture a little bit smaller so I don't block. I, I realized I put a lot of stuff at the bottom of this presentation and I don't want to be blocking a lot of any of this information. So if you can't see anything, be like, Dave, move your head out of the way or something like that uh, and let us know. Christina asks, when's the Minnesota show? Minnesota show is uh, at the end of March, I believe. You could go uh, to transferexpress.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, click on events and you will be able to pull that up uh, at any time. Um, let's see. Uh, Josh says in-person classes that we offer besides the events, not currently at this time. I know that we used to do a workshop Wednesdays where we did open some of our facilities across the United States and have guests in. Uh, I, there's been some rumblings of starting that back up, but I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, right now, all of our in-person education is at shows. So uh, just check the event schedule on transferexpress.com and we could hang out in real life. Uh, I, we just did the last webinar on why to go to a trade show and, and packed full of reasons and education at the top of that list. Um, all right, let's, uh, I see Kat already getting ahead. What's the name of the second font? I'm gonna get into fonts right here. Almost every single one of these fonts mentioned uh, and I will I will touch base on those in just a second. So, so hang out with us. Jamie, uh, asking about New York, New York, question mark. We're going to be in Atlantic City in March, so just south of New York City. Uh, a little bit, if you're upstate New York, might be a little while. But you can see here just some examples of what we're talking about with text-based designs. Of course, the New Mexico one has a little cactus in it as well. But then we have just this warp text, some more text uh, laid out, and then even some vertical text that has some elements into it. So you could see from very minimal, uh, which pretty much just is none of these right here. <laughs> we'll get into some minimal trends, uh, but just basic text uh, is like one word kind of things we've seen out there. So let's jump right in. Wait. Before I jump right in, let's talk about the apparel here right on the left. Of course, the oversized tees, if you've been in any, uh, you've, you've been on Etsy or been opening your eyes in the world, you see that oversized tees have kind of taken over uh, women's casual fashion as in terms of graphic or printed t-shirts. So just like this one here, sometimes a, a little bit larger uh, than what would typically be worn just in a size. So it could be a next level 3600 or a Porton company. But most of the time, it is a comfort wash by Hanes, a comfort colors or the that beach wash line by Porton company. So they're pigment dyed. They kind of have these nice like they call them candy pastels. Uh, so they're kind of that not like full saturation, but they're not like super worn out like some of those old vintage pigment dye ones. Uh, and they do have really, really nice covers. So um, and so, yes, so all right there, we see it there with just this layout on the back that is just some warp text, uh, text only there. So um, that, this is one thing that we're going to look at as one of our apparel styles. And we'll continue on through as we start diving into some of these uh, text trends. So the first one here that we're going to talk about is this minimalism, right? Now we're gonna use this here as an example of the motivational and positive because a lot of times you will see it uh, in athleisure or any workout gear where it's just like work hard or with this one, like live your purpose uh, for yoga stuff. It's, it just says like namaste or stuff like that. Uh, so you have this very minimalist one word, two words in this case, or three words in this case, like two lines of text. Uh, but here is where we start getting into some of these uh, these these font pairings here. So Magnolia Sky um, and Bromello are those two fonts that we see at the bottom. I didn't say Mag Magnolia Sky, I just said Magnolia over on that right-hand side. And paired with a sans font with a little bit of spacing in between the text looks great. Now, Babas New is one of my favorite fonts as a designer. It is classic 
classic and timeless, looks great with almost anything, and it's loaded in our Easy View Online Designer. Uh, if you haven't been in our Easy View Online Designer, I'm gonna jump in in just a minute, uh, but I implore you, sign up for an account at Transfer Express, and it's free to get in and start playing around with that designer. If you don't know how to draw a stick figure, you can create print ready t-shirt artwork that people are actually going to want to buy and wear. So really, really powerful. But with these two font pairings, you could see that we just took a simple sans font, a Babas New and Bondi as our top lines, and just paired them with a nice little kind of handwritten script font. Uh, and that's where we have this like kind of contrast and a nice dramatic combination of our fonts that you can see here in just two simple examples. Well, three, if you're looking over on the left-hand side for our Live Your Purpose example from Lunatics Aesthetics, right? Um, so these are typically the, your simple words and phrases. They are very positive and motivational, uh, and especially post-pandemic uh, and just building positivity within each other is something that I try to do. Uh, and just lift people up. And seeing that on shirts too is really cool. One trend that is not covered at all in this webinar, but I do like to mention it, is that sometimes even, we're gonna talk about sleeve prints in a little bit, but sometimes you'll see sleeve prints right here on the cuff that are like, you are doing a great job. And it's just a little tiny print right there and it faces the wearer. So when I'm working at my desk, working from home, I could just look down and I think I'm having a bad day and everything's going wrong. And I look down and it just reminds me, you are you are doing your best. You're having a great day. You're, you know, whatever, whatever that messaging is. But that's really cool to see as just a text only print on some of that apparel. So uh, you'll see that a lot on Etsy. One thing too that I didn't put in here that does also uh, fall into the minimal list and sometimes motivational or positive stuff are the neck prints. So right here, not on hoodies, you know, but like a crew neck uh, sweatshirt a long sleeve crew neck, uh, having it warp around this collar. Uh, so it's just up there. Uh, if it's, you know, mom life or whatever it needs to be, uh, that was just a very generic example. But sometimes you'll see that right up there, coupled with other prints on the shirts too. Um, yeah, Jesus saves, so should you, right? You could say that on, on that. Yeah, and Ashley, on the inside of the wrist, outside of the wrist, but usually it's facing the wearer. So uh, it'll be facing like it's it's not readable from somebody else. If you have if you're walking around and your arms down, it's actually upside down. So it's made to be worn. Uh, but you could put it wherever you want. Experiment with it. If you have a brand or a customer who's looking for that something unique, uh, and they have a very positive vibe like this, that's something you could suggest as an awesome decorator, right? Um, so yeah, Brianna says she's been seeing it a lot too. Uh, right. So, yeah, you see a lot of that stuff. So whatever you want to put in there, um, put it on there. So J Julie has a great question. She asks, best way to heat press a print like that that's so close to the collar. Now, what you could do is either raise the print area um, or try to get the collar off of the platen. There are some, uh, the, the one that I love the absolute most, because it is circle shaped, uh, but it, it's the uh, it's the eight inch round bagger. So that you could kind of set that and have the collar fall right off that edge. So you just have a little circle area. Now make sure you're reducing your press pressure when you're either using a mouse pad to raise the print area in a smaller area or shifting to a smaller platen. So if you're printing with like a six to eight on the pressure and you're reducing the surface area from 16 inches by 20 inches down to a little eight inch circle, you're definitely going to want to bring that pressure all the way down to about a two or something before you put your apparel on there because you just don't want to avoid those pressure marks. So that's just a hot tip um, as we go. Yeah. So yeah, we don't really recommend pillows too much with the transfer types that we have here at Transfer Express. If you're using vinyl or like a medium pressure transfer, you might be able to get away with the pillows, but we found with screen printed transfers uh, and any transfer that requires medium to firm pressure, the pillow dissipates too much of that pressure and you're not pushing the inks down into the fibers of the shirt. So uh, that's just one thing there. All right, we got off on a little tangent here, uh, but that's what we what's what we want to happen when we get these questions and interactivity because I want to help you guys out. Um, Ingrid says, what happens if you use too much pressure? Now, this is a great question. Thanks for asking, Ingrid. Uh, sometimes when you use too much pressure, you're number one going to get a platen mark in the garment. So uh, if we're using that eight inch round bag or say we're printing up here on the collar, you're going to see a defined circle right here that on like a cotton shirt or even a cotton dominant, a 60-40 blend, maybe even a 50-50 like this hoodie that I'm wearing right here, uh, you're not going to see that after it washes out. But it could look a, a little unprofessional per se uh, if you are giving that directly to a client. And so they're going to see a heat press mark in it or uh, some, some damage. It's not really damaged, but they'll, they'll see it and think that the shirt's damaged. Uh, but most of the time when you wash it, it just it washes right out. 
Now, if you do have a polyester dominant blend or any synthetic fibers, say like in tri blends and stuff, you could actually start seeing scorching on the garment, not because of the heat so much, but because of the pressure that you're putting in there. Now, if you reduce the pressure and pr printed at the proper pressure, uh, that like 290 degrees or something, whatever you're pressing at on 100% polyester, shouldn't be damaging the garment. So pressure is usually the culprit there. Second thing you may see too, especially with screen printed transfers, what, what, what we're kind of looking at here uh, is that the ink is going to spread or like be shoved so far down into the fibers of the shirt that it's not going to look fully opaque. So if you have small details like an O, right, and it's a, a tiny O, uh, that might fill in with closure. So then it's just going to be a big white circle then uh, instead of filling in. It only happens at, at tiny little uh, tiny little things. But you might see that uh, start to close more with firmer pressure, or you'll see like the texture of the shirt come through, uh, and then you're not getting that nice full opaque print. So that's some stuff uh, that could be on there. Uh, Sherry, should the transfers be pressed twice? It really depends on what transfer we're talking about. Um, but most of the transfers here at Transfer Express are fine with a one-step application. I always caution because a lot of people are like, well, just for security, I'm going to throw a cover sheet over it and press it again. Uh, but just like when you're actually screen printing in real life and throwing a shirt and putting it down a dryer, you could actually over cure the inks or adhesives on a transfer. And by pressing it twice, if you don't need to, uh, could be damaging the transfer. Like if you gave uh, Goof Proof, our screen printed transfer here at Transfer Express, full presses, like two full presses or pressed it for double the, the amount of time at 365 degrees, what it presses at, you're going to probably over cure those inks and you may see some premature cracking. It's made to apply nice and fast in four to six seconds. So it does fully cure those inks to the shirt. Uh, and pressing it again is really going to be no benefit. And you are risking damaging the uh, integrity and longevity of that print. So just keep that in mind. Now, if it's not like, you know, like even our Ultra Color Max, Ultra Color Max is designed to be a one-step press. And in most cases, when you peel it off that, that carrier, you're going to see it sitting deep down into the fibers of the shirt and fully adhered onto it. So you don't necessarily need to be doing a second press. Uh, with like Ultra Color Pro or Soft, it, it does have that clear outline being an adhesive or, or the screen printed adhesive behind the transfer. So you may see, uh, you may be able to reduce that clear outline by covering and repressing again. We have a video actually on repressing transfers coming out here uh, because some people even try to get little effects in it. They'll put canvas or like a textured the silicone application pad just to give the print a little bit of texture. Uh, and sometimes that's okay, but be very, very careful and make sure you're wash testing before you're offering your customers anything like that. So that, yeah, let's say that, right? <laughs> um, print says my issue is sizing. Do I just use the standard size? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're referencing, but in terms of print sizing, yes, standard sizing, 11 inches wide is, is mainly what we're talking about here. Um, yeah, uh, we, Ray, we're going to be talking about both screen print and digital heat transfers, the direct to film. So uh, in that one example, when I was talking about goof proof, that is a screen printed transfer and uh, the direct to film is our ultra color max transfers. So. Um, I'm going to keep going though, because we are, we are half an hour in and I'm like on slide four or five here, <laughs> five slide five. All right. So <clears throat> we have our minimalist trend right here. Now minimalist kind of falls into some of this curved type. Now this one's also going to be nice and easy, right? So nothing, nothing too crazy going on right here. Um, and this is part of, <clears throat> Still that minimal, uh, but a little bit more expanded sometimes. So like with this one too, our top left example, the one right next to it are not text only. So they are text inspired, let's say, right? So with a little cactus in there, a little palm tree with that long beach example, but you could see down the one from Trend T Territory, which is a great Etsy shop, as well as Brainwashed Co. Just use city names. So commonly you will see these lo for locations, destinations, states, cities, whatever it may be, but they could also be used a lot for like the Austin one. You can see that being like kind of a college vibe, right? So that that retro vintage inspired simple college tees, you'll see college names on there as well. And especially schools now, all the way from middle schools, elementary schools through high schools. It is just a nice timeless look that is always trending here. So uh, I do have some numbers here. So you see at the bottom here, there's there's uh, six of these designs that have little little numbers behind them, be below them. So like QAL 556, QAL 30, QAL 21, QAL 6, QAL 3, 
And of course, that last one, QAL 626. So if you are new to Transfer Express, you have no idea what those are, I want to show you right now. So what we're going to do is hop on over to our EasyView Online Designer, because I'm going to mention a ton of these little codes pretty much throughout the, integ the entire webinar right here. So uh, just so it makes the most sense to you and you could understand what I'm talking about, maybe you even wanna follow along too in the designer and make up some designs of your own. Let's hop on over to our Easy View Online Designer right here uh, and I'll show you exactly how these codes work and a little primer, I'm not gonna go too in depth, but a little primer into what Easy View Online Designer could realistically do. So let's say, let's use that, that, that top left New Mexico t-shirt right there. That looks like it's on a comfort colors blank. Let's use that as our example and let's go in. I wanna show you how quick and easy it could be for you to design. If your customer brings you say like this Los Angeles shirt or the Austin shirt and says, this is what I'm thinking, how easy it is to put this at, uh, all together right here. So uh, I'm gonna share my screen. This is transferexpress.com. Hey, look, decorating t-shirt trends webinar. This is what we're doing right now. Pretty cool, right? So let's go up on right here and we're gonna click on order transfers. Now you could click on online designer. You could click right here on order transfers or you could go down here and click on online designer. I'm just gonna click on order transfers and that's gonna pull us into Easy View online designer. Now, of course, I am also streaming right here. Easy View is a web-based application. So wherever you have an internet connection, it's working. I am streaming to you live from the same internet that is using on this designer. So if it is a little slow for me, bear with me as I'm presenting, but I promise you at home right now, it's gonna be a lot quicker for you uh, on a high-speed internet connection. But that's what makes it great about this design program is that essentially, you don't need a powerful MacBook, a top of the line PC. You could buy a Chromebook. You could even use your iPad or a tablet to use EasyView Online Designer like a pro. So let's get started, right? So we were looking at some of those layouts. Uh, the one that I mentioned was QAL3, right down in the middle there. So in easy view, you have all of your add tools here on the side. You have a whole bunch of object commands. I mean, even ungrouping, grouping, duplicating, there's patterns, align tools, arranging. Uh, so if you wanna move things like layers up and down and all around, you could do that here in the designer, even artboard changes. So if we wanna go portrait or landscape or even jumbo, make a bigger size, all of this stuff in here. Now, this is really where the magic is in easy view is all of these layouts right here. So you could see that we have promo layouts and full color layouts. Even if you go to occasions, you could see best sellers. And some of this is the trending stuff that we're gonna be talking about too. New for 2023, I know I'm talking about this, this artwork right here coming up in a few slides, but we just wanna search, right? So that one, all of those codes that I'm gonna give you. So let's say it's QAL, what? What was it, six or three? QAL, that one would work too, but I want a QAL three. So boom, right here, Compton is the placeholder text. It's going to import it into our artboard right there. Now, just with a simple double click, it opens up this window right here. So let's say uh, that was a New Mexico example, but let's say it's another cactus state. So Arizona, right? I saw some friends joining us here from Arizona. So uh, all right here, we'll pop it in. Arizona, all set, ready to go. We did want to add a little uh, a little cactus in there too, right? So just how we did add layout, and you can see that there's, I mean, there's sports layouts in here, new for 2023. Even if you just want baseball seasons coming up, right? So boom, you can see all of these baseball layouts all the way up to school layouts, everything in here uh, as our layouts. But what we could do is click on clip art here as well. And up here, let's just search cactus. You can see there's tons of stuff. So boom, there's a cactus that pulls up right here. This one looks good. And let's go ahead and just shrink this guy down. So all I'm doing is just pulling those little uh, transform controls at the edge. If you want to skew it in any way, just click off the resize proportionally, and then we can make this a real thick cactus if we want to. But I don't want to do that. Let's just click undo. You could also just do control Z or like any of those other shortcuts that you already know on your keyboard so you could work even more efficiently. So I'm going to grab this one right here, and I'm just going to move it up. Now I want to add like established whatever year uh, it is established. So we're just going to pull this in. I just clicked on add text. I told you this add menu over here on the side. So let's just say I'm going to click on this, and we'll type in EST dot, and that'll be one side. Now watch this. I could go object, duplicate, and that's just going to copy it out. Or alternately, I'll just click delete and delete that out. But I could also just do control C, copy, control V and it pastes it all right there using the shortcut commands on my keyboard. So let's say Arizona was established in, I don't know, 19, 
1902. Does that sound about right? Maybe somebody from Arizona could chime in and tell, tell me when they were a state. Now here, I'm just gonna size this right down. So now I'm even able to just scale this proportionately. Now your customer says, well, I want this print to be 11 inches wide, right? We talked about that standard print sizing at 11 inches wide. Let's select it all. Make sure that, well, well I'm just gonna select this first. I'm gonna select the bottom graphics here and I'm gonna group this. And then, so regardless of how I do it, I'm gonna do a line and center. So everything's centered up. How easy was that? We just made a print ready file guys in just a couple minutes right here, right? So super easy. Now we wanna size this all to 11 inches wide. We could go right over here to our size and look, it's pretty much already there. But if we wanted to size to nine, it all sizes in real time. Let me click resize proportionately back from when I clicked off of it, nine inches. You wanna size this for a left chest at four inches. Let's go back to the 11 inches. It sizes here in real time. So this is gonna be going on like a what, blue shirt or something. So we could go down here, the apparel color. Let's say this is going on this, this nice denim blue and it's gonna be a white print. So we'll go up here, select our ink colors to white. How easy was that? Also super easy. Now we're ready to go. We could screenshot this to our customer, but coming from a design standpoint, I'm gonna say that designs are cool, but nothing brings it to life like a mock-up, right? Nothing brings it to life like a mock-up. I see uh, Louis uh, or Luis asking, what is the max print size of the goof proof canvas? So uh, it'll actually tell you right here uh, when we click on size. So either when we click on artboard up here, portrait or landscape. So you could do uh, our, our, our standard size sheet is 11 and a quarter inch by 14 inches. And our jumbo sheet is 12 and a half by 17 and a half is what we're rocking with right here. So we could put two on this jumbo sheet. We could just copy this out and look at this. We got two all on the same sheet, right? Pretty cool. So, and, and anything else, there's tons of room. We could condense all this stuff in here, but mock-ups are going to help you sell apparel, right? No customer is, I mean, customers might see the design and go, that's exactly what we were looking for, but nothing sells it. Like, oh, you want to put it on comfort colors? Let's put it on comfort colors. I clicked on mock-up here, right here on the left-hand side. Miran, yes, Goofproof is the screen printed transfer. Plastisol inks, so exactly the same inks that you see screen printed directly onto t-shirts, uh, but you could do it without the mess of inks, emulsion, uh, screens, off contact, squeegee, squeegee durometers, screen mesh count. Uh, there's tons of stuff uh, that, that go into it, believe me. It took me about three weeks to get a print ready or, or a, a sellable result when I tried to first learn how to screen print. Uh, and if I would have known about screen printed transfers back then, all that stuff would have went out the window because I spent more than the, enough money that I could have bought a heat press on screens and squeegees and exposure units and uh, and inks and emulsion and more emulsion because I just couldn't get it to expose properly <laughs> or then it was started wearing out. So uh, I constantly I was constantly recoding screens uh, and just, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. So great question, Evelyn. Can wording be changed for the water market? Sure can. So right here, let's just say this is Dave's Prince, right? Right there, it, it updates again in real time all right here. But the best part of all is if I add apparel to it and you wanna put it online line store, this little checkbox right here activates and we could turn this off. So let's click on use apparel, right? Here is the entire catalog of uh, apparel items that's available on transferexpress.com. So if you do want to browse wholesale apparel uh, options, you don't have a tax ID or business license or a reseller's account with Sanmar or SNS like that, Transfer Express has wholesale apparel that could help you out. Orders over $300 ship free. Uh, so it's really, really cool and valuable to get some of those bulk pricing uh, without uh, having to buy bulk quantities too. Uh, it, so yeah, all great here. But we said comfort colors, right? So let's type in comfort colors and see what comes up here in our search. We see it's thinking here. And here we go. Sure enough, the 1717 or even let's go with like the 6041, right? And boom, we're gonna pull this one right on in here. Yeah, Kathy, <laughs> I'm just showing this one real quick and I'm gonna get back into those trends in just a second, okay? Uh, let's go right here and say this is gonna be this like blue color. All right here, we could click Dave's print uh, off so we lose the watermark. Here we go, right here, we could size this up and download this. So now we have a mock-up that we could send to our customer, right? And that's just gonna show you how easy it is to combine some of these layouts here in online designer. We'll go back to the end menu, do anything that we wanna do, but just like Kathy said, let's get back into those trends uh, right here. So let me grab the slideshow and we're gonna come on back over. But I said I was gonna build in some tips here to help your guys' business succeed and how you could achieve some of these uh, same kind of looks uh, yourself 
very, very easily. So we just made this curved text example up here, super easy using those tools in the online design. You can tell that I come from a design background and get real excited about online design. So thanks for, thanks for rounding me up here, Kathy, and keeping me on task. Oh, I absolutely love it. We're having too much fun today here um, at the Transfer Express. I mean, we're talking about fun stuff. So let's move into the retro revival. I said I'm using retro a lot during this presentation, uh, but here we go, even more, right? So this is this kind of fun retro aesthetic. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more in the bubbly text and the and the kind of fun designs. We're not using Comic Sans, okay? I have fonts listed here, specifically omitted Comic Sans. Don't commit that crime today, okay? You're better than that. Your business is, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We're not gonna get into that. But essentially using bold, stylized fonts here, uh, and I have them listed out. I think somebody asked earlier, uh, what is that font that's in the second example? And it's Glaw. It is one of my favorites. We joke here at Transfer Express in the marketing department that Glaw is law. We just love it in that big, chunky font you'll see used everywhere. That one uh, from Paradise Avenue that's kind of right behind me right here, uh, Good Things Are Coming is not using Glaw, but a very, very similar font. That one up there that has 20, class of 2023 is an example of using Glaw. That is actually Glaw the font uh, used in uh, a little bit more than just text. So it is text inspired, not text only, uh, but you could see that it's used in there for that kind of same aesthetic. Makes it look nice and, uh, I, I, I kind of like that old hippie kind of stuff, but that came back, everything comes in cycles. So that was really popular right around the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, and so you'll see us mention it in the Y2K segment when we talk about trends uh, that aren't just text only. So we're just covering the text right now. Cooper is a great one, a nice big chunky font there, Glaw. Bahamas Blowfish is a kind of like nice brush font, uh, garlic butter for that kind of like real, uh, I don't want to say like girly, but it's like a dainty kind of uh, fun handwritten font. And Vogue is another great one too that kind of has those rounded corners, a little bit cleaner of a serif font, uh, but you could use it for anything. So you see these uh, at the bottom here, the Kiolo 75, the 647 and the 650, all with these kind of curved warped texts. I think we just published a new uh, St. Patrick's Day layout that uses a very, very similar, uh, similar aesthetic in there as well. Um, I see Audrey asking, can we use your mock-up on our website on Etsy? Absolutely. It actually downloads in, I believe it's like 1200 by 1200 or 1300 by 1300 pixels. So it looks awesome. It is, it is exactly the format uh, that like Shopify, Etsy, or like WooCommerce really like to see. If you want the hover over like expanded view, you it's going to be, it might be a little blurry when you start blowing it up a little bit. But for the most part, uh, when it exports out of Easy View Online Designer, it's going to be great. One of the things that I didn't even show in there, and you could go find on another uh, webinar or another video, is you could actually upload your own photos and mock up the design on your own photo too. I love it for, like we talked about the crystal dye or the tie dye, where it is all completely different depending on what style you're getting, or like it just looks different because the pattern is different. They're all uniquely dyed. So you wanna see exactly how it's gonna mock up on it. You get the tie-dye t-shirt and lay it on your floor. You're able to take a photo of it with your phone, send it to your computer, upload it right into the designer and actually show the design on what the actual t-shirt is. So really, really cool to be able to do that. <clears throat> and put it together. Uh, so this is just a great wavy and groovy text. Uh, I'm sure that you guys have seen a ton of this kind of artwork coming out. It was, it kind of really gained popularity in the kind of late summer of last year and we'll see it cruise. I guarantee it's gonna be popular all the way through 2023. Uh, and just like this Paradise a Avenue example, another oversized shirt, just like our example we showed a little bit earlier. Onward we go into another text-based trend, but this is a little pit stop on the way, and it's minimalist here. It's just black ink on white shirts, or white black ink on white shirts, or white ink on black shirts. So a really, really easy way to do it is using ink changes. Now, also when we know with screen printing, if we're using screen printed transfers, the more colors you design on or in your artwork, the more expensive the per piece is gonna be. So keeping color limited is a great cost effective way to make some profit and produce some t-shirts here. Um, so this is a great one to utilize ink changes. Now, if you guys don't know about ink changes, uh, essentially it is the same exact artwork as long as it's just changing colors. 
that one, all of one color. So everything that's white is turning to black and you could actually just pay $15 per order for that instead of having to break it up to the different quantities. Cause as we look at pricing, if you're doing six of this and six of this, it's going to be cr crazy expensive instead of just doing 12 quantity pricing, which is only really going to add like $10 to your total order. And then you're just adding $15. So you're saving yourself like 40 bucks. Now I am going to jump over to easy view just one more time to show you here uh, how to easily set that up. Cause I, I'm just, lo I'm looking at my other screen right here, looking at this one color print uh, and I want to save you guys money. Okay. So this is just a quick, Quick tip on how we're going to be able to, to, to really kind of maximize your spend, right? So say we need, <clears throat> uh, let's say, yeah, 12 of these, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, all this talking. But we just need 12 of these. So we've got <clears throat> six, six quantity. Let's, but let's put six quantity in here. Screen print goof proof. Six quantity, it's going to be 68 bucks right here for six for, for our 12 here. Now, that would be 68 bucks if we wanted a white version. And then alternatively, if we went and bought a black version of it too, that's another 68 bucks. So do the math on that, just 70 by 70. I'm going to round to just say it's 140 bucks right there. Uh, so that's really, really expensive. But one way to do that where we could really save some money, actually, let's, let's bump this up because our minimum quantity, of course, when we talk about screen printing could be uh, quite expensive. So say it's 24. We need 24 of each one of these, these uh, styles, white, 24 white, 24 black. So we're at 12 sheets. We're getting two per sheet. So we're at 74 bucks. You could see that, that we just doubled our quantity from six and it added what? Four dollars to the order. <coughs> Crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. We got a lot more to talk about. I don't want to lose my voice quite yet. So essentially right here, we're going to go to this next step. And this is where we could add a color change. Now, instead of paying, <clears throat> yeah, 150 bucks here, excuse me. <clears throat> we could add this color change. So I'm going to add color change. This background color is going to go to white <clears throat> and our ink color is going to go to black, right? And I could set quantity 12 and 12. And now we're just paying 108. So we just saved 50 bucks right there. And it actually breaks all of this down here right for you. So all right in there tells you your, uh, your ink change, what you're paying per image and per sheet. Because we have two here on the same, same image, essentially, it's going to say sheet pricing and image pricing is the same. So really, really cool tools here in EasyView Online Designer, not just to help you uh, actually produce artwork that's going to make you profit, but also saving you money too. So saving you is putting more money right into your pocket, right? So just a little note here that I wanted to mention before we move on to <clears throat> our creative type styles here. Look how great these look. Now, this is taking it to that next level. There's a whole bunch of these available in the Easy View Online Designer, as you can see right here in our examples. Everything from this nice uh, bold font that has this nice little chunky, uh, and I would say that's, that kind of falls into that retro or vintage aesthetic here. A lot of this overlapping on that one in the middle, the Compton Eagles with the Compton overlaid on the Eagles, uh, that QAL 648, a really, really great style that we see used quite often. Uh, and we'll see it used uh, more this year. Uh, this Born to be Awesome is new uh, in that vertical type format so that we see over here on like our happiness example on the left hand side. Quotes always very, very popular, especially when we're talking about any uh, positivity or even some political messaging. Uh, the uh, repeated one on that bottom left of our grid view there, like almost like the uh, the thank you bag, very popular. Some just easy scripts or uh, a little bit more industrial script there uh, with the Compton Modern with a little bit of those flourishes. So taking a little bit more use than just uh, just text only. And then, of course, the one that I'm semi covering up just with some some circle text, a word in the middle. All great right in there. Um, Caitlin asked, you can't color change on spot color, ultra color max transfers. Um, so with ultra color max, you don't, uh, there is no like quantity pricing. So you could just set it up and there's also no color count. So like even in, uh, if we went back and like made that a two color print, it's going to be prohibitively expensive if one version was white and one version was black. Uh, to our example. So, but in Ultra Color Max, we are specifically talking about screen print transfers, like our goof proof, hot split, elasti prints right there. Uh, but with Ultra Color Max, you could do whatever you want and there are no restrictions. Uh, don't, no need for a color change because you're, it's going to be the same amount of money regardless of how many colors are in the, your design there. Uh, but that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, 
Am I even all the way up here? Um, all right. Yeah, I just want to make sure I was all the way scrolled up on the chat too. So at least I am uh, up to date right there on the chat section. So uh, if we are good with our type uses, let's continue into more type uses. But now we're bringing a little bit more color into this. So this is when you would be shifting over to maybe a full color transfer, unless you're doing a huge ultra uh, big run of 36 or more where like, uh, three color screen print is really going to be a more cost effective option with those quantity breaks. Uh, but this is where if you're just doing those uh, probably one to 36 pieces, we'll, we'll cut into a little break here of what's going to be the best transfer type to use. And of course, you could always find it. Uh, I'll challenge Mike right here to uh, drop the what to use when chart. So if you don't know what transfer type to use, because we are getting a lot of transfer type questions, uh, dr Mike could drop it over in the chat section over here on the right hand side. And it's a great chart of a starting point of depending on how many colors in your artwork and how many quantity you need to order, what's going to be the best option for you. Then in each little square there, it breaks it down to like if you're printing on polyester or a cotton shirt or any kind of blend like that. So Mike could throw it over there right in that transfer, uh, that transfer selector tool. Uh, right in there. So boom, he's on it. Look at that. Mike's a rock star behind the scenes. So this one here, men are cardinals, the alternating colorways. Uh, you could kind of see it, the one right behind me, right up here, the happiest place on earth. Uh, nice and uh, kind of more of those pastel colors, the candy pastels uh, that we've seen that we talked about in apparel colors, but kind of used as the ink colors here. So something like this would be perfect for one of the ultra color transfers, a full color transfer, because we're at one, two, three, four, five, six six different colors in that artwork with a black outline. So seven colors. Yeah, you're going to be doing a digital transfer for that. Otherwise, with screen print, you would need a large quantity to make that profitable. Same here with like the uh, the baseball example with all of that kind of word art collage with the baseball uh, strings in there or the seams per se. Uh, and all that stuff in there with all of those different colors looks cool and just a little bit more multi-use. Now, as we're talking about types and using text, one trend that we've seen rise is, of course, puff. Uh, so with puff coming up and being more uh, of that kind of vintage retro aesthetic, uh, especially on like comfort covers, colors or the heavy cotton, um, that the best, there's a lot of tips to making it look good. I heard that, uh, that, um, <clears throat> that Kathy was in there talking about, like she said something about reviews on Puff and she was scared about it. Here are hot tips for successful applications and a great look every single time, right? Now this right here is simple and bold. The more fine detail you have, the less room that that Puff ink has to actually puff up. Think of it like bread. If you just had a little drop of bread dough, it's not gonna puff up that much, but the more of it there is together, that's when it really rises with that heat. That's very, very similar. I mean, we're not, we're not, can't eat Puff inks. Don't do it. It's not bread, okay? <laughs> Not bread, but you want to keep it simple, nice, and bold. Uh, no super, super thin lines. Those big lines, thick lines are going to be the best way to do it. The simple words and phrases are going to be the best thing to use. Just like this, it's, I mean, this is an outline of uh, a type, but as a full left chest, you're still pretty thick, probably almost a quarter inch thick, uh, definitely over an eighth inch thick on those lines and the polka dots that end up over that green. Now you can combine it with regular colors. Our puff inks right now are just white and black. I will let out a little secret that we are testing a whole bunch of other colors, okay? So a whole bunch of other colors of puff might be coming, but if you need those other colors, those other colors of puff right now, you could actually get the brand new Stalls Puff HTV that just released a couple weeks ago, and it's available to cut on a Cricut or a Silhouette, a Roland, uh, or any of those Graph Tech cutters, the fancy cutters, uh, but black, apple green, beige, chocolate brown, gold green, blue, light pink, bubblegum pink, navy, neon blue, orange, yellow, orange, regular orange, uh, purple, and red. So tons and tons of colorways available there. Uh, the puff does hold up pretty well. I see the question in there. We have all of our transfer types independently tested uh, to 50 wash cycles. Now with puff of any kind, baby, when I was actually really screen printing on shirts, puff ink was absolutely horrible to actually print. Uh, I was never a huge fan of it, uh, but you just have to be careful of drying it. So tell your customers to tumble dry low. It is a raised dimensional Plastisol ink on a very stretchy fabric. Now, Plastisol is gonna give a little bit, but if you're abusing that thing on high heat, any decoration does not like high heat. So uh, the majority of the washing instructions you'll see are turn it inside out, wash cold, 
and then tumble dry low or air dry. And that's how you're going to get the maximum longevity out of your prints, regardless of how it's decorated, okay? Um, but with the Puff, you definitely want to be, I think the, the Puff HTV is wash tested right now to 25. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but we wash test all of ours to 25 uh, or 50 wash dry cycles to meet the industry standard. And that's from an independent testing facility. And we'll do that for all of our transfer types. So Puff is included in that as well. But when applied correctly, that is very important. Like I talked about a little bit earlier, when you're over curing inks or under curing the inks and not following the instructions, or if your heat press is not accurate on its time, temperature, or pressure, uh, you are not applying correctly. So you may run into longevity issues down the road. If you're over applying it with covering it and pressing it again, if you do it with Puff inks, they're going to flatten out. So it's not going to be a, uh, a good time. So, uh, yes, you got to be very, very careful with that. Wash it correctly. Uh, take care of it. Print it correctly to the application instructions. Even like the pre-pressing that we talk about, uh, if you've watched any of our videos, you want to make sure you're pre-pressing the garments to release any moisture from the fabric. Yes, you need to do that with Puff because otherwise when that moisture is fighting up, uh, the inks are going down and they're trying to rise too. And it just kind of wrinkles them. It looks like your fingers when you get out of the bathtub uh, and so, or the pool uh, and your fingers are all wrinkly. That's exactly how the puff is actually going to look. So you don't want to do that, right? Um, you don't want to do that. Uh, Ultra Color Max Transfer is good to go on 100% polyester fabrics is a question that Tony asks. Absolutely. 100% polyester, cotton poly blends, 100% cotton, even spandex. So if there's a uh, spandex fibers in the shirt or you're just printing on like spandex leggings, you betcha Ultra Color Max will apply to it and stretch with it. Really, really cool stuff. All right. Are you guys ready to get away from text and into some really cool designs? Because I am. I'm going to do it anyway. If you're not ready, buckle up. We're going to hit these designs. So there's a whole bunch of new design trends that came out in the past year. Um, and some of them kind of popped and faded. And some of them are still around. Uh, one of them that is really on the rise currently right now is uh, the new retro country. So we're going to talk about these trending designs right here. Uh, and, a, and basically four different categories. Some of them go into subcategories that we'll talk about just a little bit. But it's the stuff that I've seen on the rise. Of course, this isn't the end-all, be-all guide of what you should be decorating here in 2023. There's going to be your regular school layouts. Uh, you, there's going to be a tons of other stuff. But to stay relevant with your customers, attract the eye uh, of prospective clients or uh, people who may be printing for you, or if you're running your own brand, you definitely need to be on the cutting edge of relevancy so that you are able to attract new clients and stay right on that, that top of everybody's mind or top of the search as they're looking for these trending styles. Um, so yes, absolutely, absolutely want to want to check that out, right? So new retro country, Southwest vintage country, uh, the new vintage country, however you want to call it. I've seen it mentioned like 20 different ways. There's no set way to talk about it. Uh, my favorite way is just new retro country because it's kind of like retro. It's kind of Southwest inspired design uh, with a lot of like imagery, like the cactuses and stuff you see here. But even you'll see it used for like Nashville or like Southern, like Southern stuff. But you see it used all over, not just for those. Uh, even like beach vacations start to like lean into this aesthetic, right? We're also going to touch on some mystical and divine uh, kind of the that that uh, design aesthetic as well. The 90s looks that kind of pair with streetwear, a little bit of skate brands, a little bit of Americana tossed in this uh, huge. Uh, there, there's a, a huge kind of, I guess, genre that we could fit a lot of things into there that even kind of touch on some of those modern trends that even kind of point back to that like retro country stuff. And then, of course, the Y2K the the millennium uh, as you will and the 20 year old vintage stuff as like everything that was popular 20 years ago is always pretty much popular right now depending on whatever year it is right so we saw the 90s really come back in the past couple years uh that 90s vintage aesthetic and you'll see that is still informing some design trends as we move through uh into uh You'll move through into the uh, the rest of the year and these design trends here. So this is from the Nashville Boho right here, a great Etsy shop. But these designs here, the Desert Vibes for Arizona State, uh, Fuel the Sunset. So that's just a great look. Now you see this is more of these like pastel washed out pigment dyed colors. This could very well be a comfort colors blank. Uh, so that, that same kind of same kind of look on that. 
Now, I'll, again, I want to inform you with the best uh, layouts that we have. Like I'll hide myself here so you could see these numbers down here. So all of the numbers down at the bottom correspond over to EasyView. So if you want to utilize any of these trends, for example, yourself, or, or you have a customer who approaches you, here's a nice little cheat sheet to be like, all right, this is a great starting point where we could get on with these examples. So these are all just the placeholder text uh, as it comes in, but you could change them however you want. You'll see that uh, with some of our examples coming up, we did change this on here. Um, the type of tea, Kathy asked, what's the type of tea on the picture? I believe this is a Comfort Colors 1717. Uh, it is the Comfort Colors, just regular standard, 100% cotton heavyweight t-shirt. Uh, and it is that pigment dye sewn in label. You can see that there's a little bit of stitching right here, maybe where the, the label is right above the E on that neck hem. Uh, and it does really have those kind of like vintage worn in vibes and feel. Love Comfort Colors for that. It could also be the Comfort Wash by Hanes, uh, which are just a very, very similar style. Or if you are with Sanmar or even on TransferExpress.com, the Porton Company, I think it's the 73s uh, are, or the, maybe even the 99s are the, uh, they're the, the beach wash line. So they are pigment dyed as well. So you see them, uh, you'll see those pop in there. So those are some great, those are three different styles, three different manufacturers, all making a very, very similar style of t-shirt, probably in that like uh, olive drab, whatever colorway uh, as that goes in. So here, let's jump right into the new retro country. A ton of designs that are available in EasyView Online Designer. And we just had a meeting earlier this week because this design trend is so popular right now. So many people are asking, Where's all the Western artwork at? Where's all the where's all the Southwest artwork at? Or looking for this design aesthetic, right? Um, and so we are thinking about consolidating them uh, into at least like the being able to filter by them because we've seen uh, they're, they're all over. Some of them are in vacations. Some of them are over in uh, occupations. Some of them are over in businesses. So like there's a whole bunch, they're spread out all in there. Uh, but here is a nice little short list. So if you want to screenshot this right now, uh, just so you have a nice little short list or wait till the, uh, the replay comes your way in email probably tonight or tomorrow sometime uh, and be able to pull that in. So you see uh, a few of the big design elements here are curved text. You'll always see the curved text uh, and arches. Uh, so you see kind of that like Southwest aesthetic kind of coming in. Uh, it brings in a little bit of Americana and tattoo style too, at least in like the old like vintage imagery with the uh, True Basics uh, version up there with the Stay Wild with the, with the the Rodeo Girl. Like you definitely have some of that like the old stock art kind of stuff, you know, back when stock art wasn't a thing. It was you had to buy art that to put on your letterpress <laughs> essentially. Uh, you also see some of that like 90s vintage in a lot of natural colors here, all right? So that's where you're seeing a lot of the natural colors. You're seeing that Southwest inspired ink palette, uh, both for the inks and like I mentioned, apparel. These will usually typically stay within two to three colors too, uh, predominantly screen printed in higher quantities or produced on demand. But of course you could do these with a digital transfer as well if you're only producing one or two, a nice easy way to uh, to get a look just like that stay wild. Now that print looks to be probably, I would say 11 to 12 inches high. So that'll fit on any one of our gang sheets. And with Ultra Color Max, you could even go oversized up to 22 by 22 inches, which is just absolutely gigantic. Uh, with the Arizona one down there, you get a little bit more color into it. So I think that's a four color print, uh, black, green, that orange color, and the red. So yeah, four color print right on that. Um, and on a natural colorway, that's from Trending Designs to You from Etsy. So you'll see a lot of Etsy examples here. Uh, that's a great way to find inspiration for yourself. Uh, I even like using sometimes Google Image Search. Uh, Dribble, the, the show and tell place for designers, uh, Behance. But one thing about Google Images is that it's updated so often that you could really start to pick up on like things that are currently trending on the rise because Google starts to index them. So a great place to look for inspiration. You could see it all over here right now. So uh, this one here, QVA32, the blue shirt that I have as our example, is just a modification of our layout for Palm Springs uh, and kind of more into a streetwear style. I'm going to touch on it here, but we're going to touch on it a little bit down the road uh, at Long Beach this year. Everybody, and I mean like almost everybody, left chest print, full back print. 
incredibly popular here coming up. Uh, and we didn't necessarily touch on print locations too much until a little bit later in the webinar, but left chest print on the front, full back print, incredibly popular here. So uh, look for that coming up too. And it fits really well with this design aesthetic. Uh, so uh, think all of this as a vintage with a very, very modern twist. Flat colors, uh, maybe some distressing on it, uh, but a kind of very uh, hands-on country Western vibe here too. Now, as part of this is that Americana vibe that I was talking about too. So this definitely has the Americana vibe to it. Uh, but as we dive in a little bit more, this is a, a subgenre of this design aesthetic that we're looking for. So think a little bit more tattoo style. You have the fonts here, like that QAL 64 over on the far left side, uh, where it has a little bit more of that, like that tattoo look, you'll see those stars come into play. One design element that I'm seeing all over everything. I was walking through Target this past weekend and almost every single t-shirt print regardless of what it was, had a checkered print on it, just like that she found her cowboy with the little skull cowboy guy right there. There's checkered things on everything, down the arms of prints, uh, the, in the background of prints. I even have any, another example of uh, like the Y2K aesthetic using checkered board prints. So you're going to see that pop up absolutely everywhere, right? Uh, so everywhere, all right on that. Uh, Crystal says, can we get a time check on how much longer? Um, I am going to say we have a little bit of slides left. Um, I'm going to say probably like a half an hour tops of what we're going to do. I'm going to try to rush through this. We'll pick up the pace here for you guys as well. But you see a lot of this design aesthetic using skulls, using these more like clip arts of like the old stock stuff um, and the way to go uh, with that. Chris says full back prints cover the whole transfer and gang sheets are hard to make. And that's where like, uh, you know, I would agree on that. Uh, but when you're doing those full back prints, if you are using the, uh, let's say the jumbo size, that 12 inch by uh, 17 inches, you could get a 14 inch high print and fit tons of left chest stuff on there. So at least you're fitting the full uh, shirt on one gang sheet onto that. But that's a great, great point, Chris, uh, is that, yeah, when you are maxing out that full back, you do have to start to look at uh, some of that extra space on the gang sheet. But usually around 11 inches wide, that 12, 14 inches high is a nice full back print for most uh, most sizes of apparel. Now, if you're just doing like extra larges and up, yeah, you're probably going to want to go a little bit bigger that, that 13, 14 inches, 12 and a half, uh, definitely has like the minimum width of what you want to go with. But you see some of these here are getting a lot of inspiration all set for you, uh, and, and ready to go. So, uh, this is some of these trends that we showed. So similar like that arch aesthetic um, and even some text with some more elements using GLAW. These are real world use cases that you could see these design aesthetics transferring over into businesses or in this case, a festival as well. So you have the arch text, you have text underneath and even like a nice little kind of like retro vintage illustration that looks almost like stock art that fits right there down in the middle. You know, um, here on the left hand side, a tone on tone print. That is a Porton Company uh, beach wash line right there. You can see the sewn in tag, um, but that is that same kind of comfort colors feel and vibe, but spoiler alert at like a fraction of the price, like literally like a, a quarter of comfort colors price. I love comfort colors, but I also love port and company because it's, it's a lot better on the wallet. Your customer doesn't really know. I mean, it does have a Sony label. They're going to know, uh, but it's, it's, it feels and looks the same. So that's great stuff to have, to be able to show your customers, uh, especially like with an aesthetic like this, a tone on tone print to show them an example of it. And they go, you know what? This is exactly what I'm looking for, but it fits my budget a little bit better. Tools to help you sell, right? I said I was going to mention them throughout the entire webinar here today. Now, moving into the next design aesthetic, I'm getting way ahead of myself, and we're we're flying through it now. Now we're making real good progress, um, is the mystical and divine art. Now, this is kind of a, a carryover. If you were with us last year or the year before, we're like, it was called cottage core. I don't know why they, they have to add core to the end of all of these aesthetics, but like cottage core was like rubber boots and flowers and like this kind of dainty style of design that used a lot of floral imagery. Uh, Jenny asks, what was the name of the less expensive company? And that's Port and Company. It is available on the wholesale apparel section at transferexpress.com. You can find it in some other places too, um, but that's where I get ours from uh, over at at uh, at. Uh, transferexpress.com uh, in the wholesale apparel section. 
had had a little momentary uh, uh, lapse of where I buy apparel from. Now, of course, here we do see a lot of handwritten or uh, uh, more cursive style fonts, uh, a lot of floral elements or little flourishes, sometimes geometric. Think uh, tarot cards. That whole tar tarot card aesthetic uh, is getting incredibly popular. So uh, very stuff, uh, stuff that has to do with uh, astrology or zodiac themes, uh, even, you know, leveraging, mixing it all together. This is commonly two or three colors too. So you won't see these necessarily as like single color prints, although I would not rule that out of the question. Of course, when we're talking about economy and just the design, it really helps when you're doing across multiple colors. So like you have this on a blue shirt, you have it on a red shirt, you have it on all of these like muted pastel, of course, right? Candy pastel colors. You have it on all of these different types of apparel that you have to, you have to, white works on all of them, right? No need to do ink changes, no need to do anything else. You set up the order once and you're able to print on all of these different things right here. Um, yeah, port and company. I see everybody jumping into the chat here. Uh, let's move on to our 90s aesthetic, right? So bringing some of those 90 vibes back. And here's another example right here with the Boulevard tees at the bottom uh, that a very street wear, the black ink or black shirt, white ink on it, uh, left chest. Of course, always popular. A trend year in, year out is a black t-shirt, right? It is the number one that I'm sure you guys decorate through. Uh, over my history in the apparel decorating industry, black t-shirts are probably a solid 90% or black hoodies even too. Roll those in. It's a solid 90% of every single shirt that I've ever printed over the past decade. So uh, you probably see it year after year and this year, no different, right? But again, left chest, big back print. I was able to fit these and inside tag prints all on one sheet. And that is a, I believe a 12 inch wide graphic uh, that we fit on a jumbo sheet. So able to fit all of our inside tags, the left chest print, as well as that full back print uh, that we put on all of those. We actually use those as an example for printing in one of our videos showing sizing across a whole range of stuff. So if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel over there, uh, it's a lot of the work that I do just, just helping things out. And if you ever have uh, a, a video that you want to see that you can't find, we will make it for you. Okay. So make sure you reach out. We want to help in any way that we can. Uh, Marilyn asked typical size of left chest uh, is about four to four and a half inches, depending on what it is. This one right here. So the boulevard at the bottom, I believe is right around four inches because it is a circle. So circles always look bigger. When I say like 11 inches for a standard center chest, if you made an 11 inch circle, it is a gigantic circle. So I'll usually size those down to even more like a nine inches. So it looks more manageable uh, on a shirt because yeah, otherwise they get very big. So uh, that's one, one kind of exception to the rule. But you see these 90, 90s looks kind of really coming up for streetwear. The checkerboard that I was mentioning earlier, that's where this is really popular too. If this, uh, this, skate of mind was a little bit bigger. You can see that this background behind the guy is actually a checkerboard pattern. So uh, bringing that old like Vans or uh, the X Games like aesthetic from the 90s, the extreme sports kind of pulling that back in. Uh, and any of those skatewear brands, the streetwear brands are kind of moving even more into that aesthetic and a little bit more on streetwear coming up in just a couple slides too. So think band tees. What do band tees look like? Uh, the old Nirvana kind of grunge style, uh, which we saw a little bit even mirrored in that country Western with the distressing where it's like a little bit of the arched or curved text over the top, an image down below, whether it be a picture of a band or a, a picture of a nice little landscape, something like that with a little bit of distressing on it brings back that 90s grunge really does pair well with the current trends in t-shirts too uh that just being that more like distressed and vintage look right right so uh definitely want to make sure you're seeing that and over here on the left hand side that grid pattern the triangle i mean like what doesn't scream 90s more than that right there so the north shore high school that one added with just you know and seeing these examples of how they've inspired design for say a school this isn't a streetwear, but it's something that the kids would actually want to wear as it's currently relevant and trending, right? So things definitely to keep in mind when we start talking about that. Now, when we talk about these throwbacks to the 90s, I mentioned it earlier, and we're going to move into it right now is Y2K. So this is the newest throwback, right? Makes me feel old talking that like, it's like, oh, I remember when Y2K happened and then we switched over to the year 2000 and oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was a, a wonderful time that was now at this point, 23 years ago. 
<laughs> uh, but this is the newest vintage, as we'll say. Again, the candy pastel apparel comes out. Uh, sometimes even Heather Grays. I know that they were popular uh, year in and year out, but uh, used for this aesthetic as well. And look at that Patty's Day up in the right-hand corner checkerboard pattern in the background so you'll see a lot of this kind of falling into the uh that that mayfair group style of like collage design so you'll see a lot of rainbows or gradients speaking of you know when we when i talked about cottage core a little bit ago like rainbow core is what they're kind of branding this aesthetic rainbow core what I, who makes up these names, right? No, it's a little bit, just a lot of the color-rich gradients. Uh, you'll see kind of minimalism design or big chunky design. It is all over the place. And when I was talking at like the top of the show, uh, almost like an hour ago at this point, we're uh, saying like, oh yeah, remember we look back on those times, 2002, 2003, and we're like, oh, oh yeah, that, that does not look good in hindsight, you know? We lived through it, but now it's back around, right? Just like when bell bottoms go out of style, everybody's like, bell bottoms, we look stupid in those. And then 20 years later, everybody's wearing bell bottoms, right? <laughs> so you see a lot of these chunky fonts come out, uh, the groovy aesthetic kind of falling in here. You look, yes, yes, Nilda, great, great uh, observation there saying, like, looks like Lisa Frank. So yeah, absolutely. That kind of Lisa Frank design, uh, the, the early days of like Hello Kitty, you have like glitter and glam and all of these gradients kind of pastel colors sometimes bold colors and even in that make some noise look there's a checkerboard right below the mouth too so like the kind of cartoon styles you have these flourishes the organic shapes uh even everything to like that more like tattoo style like the easy tiger graphic but then with these like it enhanced and exaggerated gradients that aren't necessarily like linear gradients. They're more radial gradients and soft. Uh, you have the imagery of the, the flowers and the butterflies and the mushrooms. And, uh, and so you see this all coming through as well. Even the little candy hearts, if you could still find them in stores, I went looking for them. Do they even sell them anymore? It's just a figment of our imagination. Like they, nobody ate them. I mean, unless you liked eating chalk, I don't know. Right. But those candy hearts right there, that kind of vintage nostalgia, kind of uh, colorways, the fun, uh, just, you know, I like that design too. cats, pizza, naps, slippers, snacks, gal pals. I wish those candy hearts said that stuff instead of the be mine or whatever, whatever they they used to say or still say if you could find them. Right. If you can find it, but there are the layouts right there that can help you get started in some of these. And these are customizable. You don't like the mushroom or the flower on it, take it off, just the butterfly. Don't like the flourishes. You could ungroup this artwork and remove it however you have it. Kathy confirms candy hearts are still a thing. Could you send some? Can you send some to us up here? <laughs> I'm kidding. They'll they'll arrive after uh after Valentine's Day, but that would be that would yeah. I, I don't I don't know if I would even eat them too. It's chalk. Is it chalk? Do they taste good? I haven't had one in so long. I can't remember, right? Do I want to chance it? Mm, I don't know. I might might as well eat a peep <laughs> as it's good, coming into Easter season. But as we talked about it, I know I just saw you guys talking about it in the chat. Like, wait, you could do gradients? Full color is really this trend coming up. Like the look, Lordy, Lordy, look who 40. Uh, that's kind of that same, like super loud colors. You have everything in there. John says flavored chalk. <laughs> They're better stale. Oh, man, I started this entire <laughs> debate on the candy hearts. I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, let's see. Uh, tone on tone, Chloe, uh, if you're talking about tone on tone with Goof Proof or Ultra Color Max, a great way to do it. Uh, one of the things that I do recommend if you're ever doing tone on tone, get yourself one of these color selector swatch books because then you have actual ink colors because it's always hard to match to on screen. So if I said like, oh, I want to do a tone on tone gray here that I could go and find my grays somewhere. I'm trying to do this fast. I know we're, we're running out of time, but I could grab my grays and go, oh, the charcoal is actually where I want to be because I was looking at gray and it's the same color. I'm not even going to see the print, but I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'll grab that charcoal, but it's a great handy tool to have uh, if you don't already have one and you're going to be using screen printed transfers. This thing is a lifesaver. It also gives your color, your customers confidence because they see the color of actual Plastisol ink on fabric too. So they are confident it's going to turn out the way that they want. And of course, we'll Pantone match too. If you have a Pantone book, I'm going to pull one out here as well. So if you do have a full Pantone book, we can match the Pantone color as well. Uh, but it is, I believe, $20 or $25 per order per color. 
in the two years that I've been almost exclusively printing with uh, screen printed transfers, I've not once had to match a color to a Pantone value. Even somebody specified, they're like, oh, I need 29, 35, whatever it needs to be. Uh, and it was Jag Green. So I just picked Jag Green or Shark Teal. It was one of these two. Uh, and they were like, no, that's perfect. And I was able to show them the color before I took any money, managed expectations. And they were like, man, sweet, thanks. I really, really appreciate that. And it, the, the project just turned out absolutely perfect. So you don't really necessarily need to do it. So when I was talking about breakdowns here, when we talk about the trend of full color apparel, Ultra Color Max 1 to 35 is pretty much going to be the way to do it. Now, Ultra Color Max is a direct-to-film transfer. It is produced $0.06 cents per square inch, right? So all right there. No quantity discounts. So that's why we say up to that 35 quantity and depending on the size. So if you're putting like just little left chests that are super colorful or even just a couple colors, definitely 36 quantity and under, it's going to be way cheaper. Sometimes even uh, when you go to those higher quantities too, uh, it could be 50 or 60 quantity. If you're just doing a small little minimal print that we are talking about, right? Uh, you could get that for a real cheap price uh, for a high quantity. So always easy view online designer is going to tell you that when you change your chance or type down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, live updates on pricing, live updates on turn time and warnings that are going to help you save money too. So even if you're at like right below a quantity break, it'll say, Hey, save money off your order uh, and just upgrade to this extra quantity. So you're going to order more, but you're actually going to pay less over your total order. So it'll tell you that all in mathematical terms. Uh, so uh, Ultra Color Pro is our hybrid transfer. So it is a digitally printed so that you could still get all of that nice full color gradients, uh, anything like that. No color counts are going to increase the price. Uh, but because it is set up with a screen print adhesive, that it becomes cheaper for per piece when you do larger runs. So it is sold by the sheet. Uh, and it does have those quantity breaks similar to a screen printed transfer. Uh, so it is a great idea to, to switch on over to that if you're doing a higher quantity. But you can always just jump back before back, back between the two uh, in Easy View Online Designer to see uh, which one's going to be cheaper for you. So as we are talking about more trends that aren't directly design aesthetic related, but printing t-shirts, branding. Branding has become incredibly popular, both on the inside tag, and again, how I mentioned with apparel suppliers, the tearaway tag movement that happened a couple years ago, uh, where almost every single style of apparel now has a tearaway tag, it's for this reason. All of those apparel mills and manufacturers and suppliers took note that people wanted to rebrand their tees with screen prints on the inside. You don't have to relabel. There is no cutting out a tag and having to put it under a sewing machine every time and sew a new label into it. This is a way that you could increase the value of your t-shirts. Now, just a side note, the story that I always like to talk about is this actually happened to me, right? Uh, I was choosing at the time to use Hanes uh, as the, it was the 5250 or the 5280 uh, was the t-shirt that I had a great deal on at the price. And this was 10 years ago or eight years ago. Great deal on the t-shirt. Liked the way it fit, at least me, right? Uh, so I was printing all these t-shirts. Uh, somebody sees that Hanes tag and goes, man, why did I pay $10 for these? I could buy a 20 pack at Target for 10 bucks. It's a completely different shirt. It's not the paper thin shirt that's in that like vacuum shrunk plastic pack at Walmart or Target, but they saw the label and immediately went, hey, this is the same brand that I buy discount. Why is this so much more expensive? There's no way you're upcharging me $9 for the printing on this, right? And it opened this entire conversation. I had to say, hey, you know, no, these are actually a way higher quality brand. It's or way higher quality cut of a t-shirt of a style. It's just manufactured by the same brand, but they would let go of this preconceived notion in their mind that it was a budget t-shirt. Now, a Hanes 5250 is, of course, an affordable blank. But they're, they didn't have the budget for American Apparel or Bella Canvas at the time, so they're not going to be getting a premium blank, right? Now, had I ripped the label out of there and rebranded it with my own business name or even their business name, they would have never known. They would have never thought for one second. They would have thrown the t-shirt on and been, wow, this feels pretty good. This is a lot better than those that discount pack that I buy at Target. This is a great shirt. Man, this guy really hooked me up, right? All because of what was in on the inside tag, because of that preconceived notion of what brand was in there. And now if it could be your own brand, if you're running your own brand or the marketing opportunity, if you are a custom decorator, put it on in there. Most people are not going to care, but it's going to get your marketing message out there. Uh, if you've ever bought a shirt from Custom Ink in a pinch, right? 
they hang tag almost everything with a custom ink hang tag, like because they want to get their branding out there. It's worth it for them. Uh, and on the inside, even if you're a custom decorator, sell your customers on this. This is a value add. And when you're building gang sheets and using screen printed transfers, it literally costs you no extra money. Pictured here right over the left-hand side is me applying that Boulevard Motorcycles t-shirt. Uh, now, granted, the big large back print is on the front, okay, before anybody calls that out. Uh, but I'm putting a tag on that using the tag along platen. My absolute favorite thing about Hotronics presses is the interchangeable platen, right? Well, also the even heating and the, the auto clam and okay there's a ton of stuff i love about them but you can watch youtube to hear me talk more about those but the tag along platen allows you to print that branding on the inside tag and print the front of the shirt at the same exact time now another spot for branding because i didn't say inside tag prints solely here at the top of this slide it is trend branding so this is branding put it on a left sleeve right on that cuff. And this tag along platen allows you to do it without setting up your press or using anything to mask the seam on the bottom of the arm. As you can see, even on a hoodie, it's right here. So if I wanted to put it on the outside here, I have to put it over that uh, when we're say like a short sleeve t-shirt, right? So we wanna be able to print on that. That So it's a double use. Not only with the tag along, you can print the inside tag, but you would also print on sleeves. And another great opportunity for you to put your brand name or sell it as a value add to your customers to say, hey, I know the front doesn't say your brand name on it. Do you want to you want to put it on the on the uh, right there on the on the sleeve or even maybe even on the upper back? And a lot of times they'll be like, you know what? That's a great idea. How much extra is it going to cost me? And you're like, it's only going to be an extra 50 cents a shirt. And they're like, yeah, sure. Throw it on there. No problem. It costs you absolutely nothing and barely any time. And you're, you're making more money, adding value to their apparel and adding value to your services and suggesting it like, there you go. It's great. Um, Miran says, do you recommend somewhere else to print my label with my logo? Not necessarily the makeup of the garment. Um, so... In many cases now, if you're buying a side seamed garment, all of the actual legal requirements for relabeling. So there's four things that you absolutely need. Number one, your business name. Number two, what the fabric is of the t-shirt. Number three, where the t-shirt was manufactured. And number four, care instructions. Legally in the United States, those are the only four things that need to be on any apparel when sold to the consumer. Size is made up and it does not matter, okay? There is no standard set for size, so the the, F, the FTC does not require you uh, to have uh, size on there. But I always recommend size and your website. Put them both on there so that people know know where you're coming from. So four, six things that you should realistically have on your T-shirts, uh, but they're only legally required to have four. Now, I mention that because the side seam on many of them, this one right here, I'm wearing a next level hoodie right here. This side seam tag, has all of the washing instructions, everything legally required. It doesn't say next level on it, but it does have their RN number, which does suffice for the brand name. So I could rip out the tag up here and put anything I want up on the inside. Uh, and I don't, I don't have to worry about uh, any legality because the tag on the inside covers all of the legal requirements on that stitched label. Um, Courtney, yeah, real quick, I could go over the six legal things required for t-shirts. There's actually only four, but I recommend six. So the first one is your company name. So they, they need to know uh, where the garment was manufactured, what fabric the garment is manufactured from, and the care instructions for that type of garment. So those little icons too, because the icons are standardized. You could just use the icons. You don't have to say machine, wash, cold, tumble, dry, low, do not iron on print, right? You don't have to say that as long as you put the icons there that say that uh, because everybody has the internet. You can look up the icons if you want to, uh, but that that is fine for the government. And to be completely honest, who actually follows washing instructions? I know that we all should, and I know that we put disclaimers on our stuff to tell people to follow the washing instructions, but I know every single time it goes in the washer on whatever cycle it was on, it gets thrown in the dryer. I turn the dryer on and hit start. So whatever normal cycle, whatever Samsung or LG has programmed and it's whatever it is, right? So like people aren't necessarily doing it, but those shirts that I love, I have one concert tee that I bought in, ooh, 2010 maybe. Um, and I have babied that thing. Number one, it's like a tri band. So it's already a super thin shirt. So I'm worried I'm going to wear, I'm going to wear holes in it. Um, but the print is like super fine lines and very, very dainty uh, from one of my favorite brands. And I just don't want anything to happen to it. So like, that's one that I, I make sure I like hand wash or even just like 
yeah, throw it in a cycle with just cold stuff uh, and then never dry it because I don't want it to shrink. I still want it to fit. Um, obviously, as I've aged, I've not went down in size. <laughs> so I still want to be able to fit it. And when it goes in there, um, yeah. Uh, Tracy. Yeah. So that's a great thing. Tracy brings up, she says, Bella Canvas says made in the USA when you look them up online, but it seems that they're only partially made in the US. Can I still put made in the USA? Which is a absolutely great question. Now, on the majority of Bella Canvas inside tags, say made in the USA from foreign made parts, right? So that is a requirement because it is made in the USA, but it's not of uh, USA cotton. But I know that they do actually a lot of stitching in Los Angeles. So uh, specific styles from Bella Canvas, if they are manufactured, I believe one of their, they have Central America uh, manufacturing plants. Uh, so it, they will say specifically what country it's, it's produced in uh, on the label. If the label says made in the USA, you are safe to say made in the USA on your printed tags replacing on it as well. Uh, also Bella Canvas, many of their styles are side seamed and include the side seam right here. So let that take care of all the legal liability if you're buying that type of style, uh, just like this next level hoodie that I'm wearing uh, and put just your brand name, the size, your website, uh, some funny little things in there for the inside tag branding. I like the little Easter eggs that are like, give it to your mom. She knows what to do. Or uh, one of my friends down in Texas at the workshop, they had one where they literally interpreted the symbol. So it was like, put pig in box because it was a box that had two dots on it, but that's like machine wash cold or whatever is the symbol for it. Uh, so they like, they, they literally interpreted it. It was just, just too funny. Um, but we're going to move on from branding because I still want to talk about trends with patterns, patterns like we talked about, even with the polka dots that we saw in the, uh, the puff example that I showed earlier, as well as the checkered board pattern are all available in the online designer. Now, all you have to do is select effects right there and you could get it going nice and easy, uh, and you'll pull up all these patterns, be able to apply it right here, like this tie-dye pattern that in this bubbly font that really fits that Y2K aesthetic, right? Even the leopard print on the lips, I think, fits into that, that Y2K aesthetic. So uh, being able to put that in there, you could fill text, clip art, full layouts, whatever you want in there. Uh, you could put in there. So patterns are a great way to do it. Now, another trend, this is not necessarily as a design aesthetic, but as a uh, as something you could sell to your customers and advertise almost year round is travel t-shirts. So being able to show off when the family's going on a trip, when you're going on class trips, bachelor, bachelorette parties, uh, or any trips like that. And of course, groups or cruises, stuff like that. I do it all the time. Every single year, ever since I became a dad, I want to be that dad, right? <laughs> And I make every single person who goes on vacation, if it's the extended family, the in-laws, uh, my daughter included, uh, even like the brother-in-law or our family friends will sometimes go. And I make everybody a t-shirt that we all wear and at least have to get a picture of all of us wearing the t-shirt once on the vacation. Bonus points uh, if there's multiple, multiple times. So uh, I'm going to Riviera Maya here in a couple months and you betcha. I'm making t-shirts and I'm going to embarrass the entire family. So you should do, and you should encourage your friends and neighbors to do the same because it's just good, clean fun. And you own a t-shirt business and you're trying to sell t-shirts, right? Right? <laughs> so sell those t-shirts, right? Uh, awesome. Awesome thing in there. Um, I see some collaboration going on in the chat. Look at you guys going. Absolutely love it. Way to go. That's what I love about these, uh, these interactive formats here in the webinars. Uh, is that you guys get to kind of build a sense of community. Now, if you are a Transfer Express customer, head on over to Facebook because we have an a, a entire community with, I think, up to 10,000 decorators now maybe, uh, but it is the Easy Prince Idea Group or Easy Prince Dealers uh, Group uh, in there. And Easy Prince Dealers Group, It's some, I, I don't know the exact name of it. I think it's Easy Prince Dealers Group, uh, but... It is a whole bunch of Transfer Express questions uh, ranging from, hey, what transfer type should I use? Hey, guys, I'm running into this issue. Uh, have you ever seen this before? And then you just have all of these decorators jumping in. I will say the community of apparel decorators, even though we live in this like national or even global economy, being able to help each other out rises the entire uh, industry up and seeing just you know, a level of collaboration and uh, idea sharing at like these trade shows and events like Impressions Expo. You have guys from Rock talking to, uh, you know, the m and and everybody's just sharing ideas about everything. Uh, and decorators are sharing their challenges and successes uh, with each other and making friends that maybe last a lifetime, networking for some solutions right here. Uh, so we do have a private community on Facebook. So you could talk about anything you want without your customers seeing it, right? 
because we just want to talk to other decorators. We don't want to be giving our secrets away, showing, showing how the magic trick is done to our customers on public Facebook. So we have these private groups. So Easy Prince Dealers Group, uh, if you signed up for an account and made a purchase, you probably got a uh, an email saying, hey, come join us in the community because it's a wonderful community where we share a lot of ideas there. Some of you here may have even uh, may have even found the webinar we posted in in the in the group yesterday about the webinar today. Hey, we want to help you guys out. We have this great content together uh, about the current trends of what we've seen and what uh, what we are kind of forecasting coming. So travel shirts here back to our content uh, are definitely something that is popular year after year after year. So uh, just going in there. Um, Marilyn, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, that is that is uh, my heart. My heart breaks for you. But uh, building the business uh, is a is a great way to uh, I mean, kind of. Yeah. Halo Custom is a pretty cool name, too. I got to say that. So uh, anything I could do to help you out. I'm here for you. OK, I'm here for you. Um, so let's let's keep rolling. There's more trends. Right. Oh, man, we're in an hour and a half. Uh, I'm hopefully hopefully not going for a record long one today, but I just want to I want to help you guys out. There's so much cool stuff that's coming out this year that we've seen. Uh, so I definitely want to share this with you. Neon, keeping up with that '90s throwback, the 2000s throwback. Neon is back. So at Transfer Express, we have goof proof colors, which is our screen print and transfer. Uh, even hot split. And our Elasta prints, if you want to screen print on 100% polyester with these limited colors, just like this one right here uh, for the Westlake Gamers, this is neon green on black. Now, there was a lot of debate sometimes about neon colors not looking all that great on darker colors. And there's only really one exception, and that's neon orange. It looks a little bit more like burnt sienna or like a, uh, I don't know, not, not neon orange, right? We have all of those neon colors here available in our uh, swatch book as well. Here's all of our neon colors that we have available. Uh, all right there. Let's see if that could focus on that a little bit. Look at that. So that's all of our neon colors right there. So the neon orange does not look that great on a darker color. All the other ones look fantastic. You can see right here we have neon uh, green on a black shirt. Looks nice and bright neon green. So blue, green, lime, yellow, orange, and neon pink. On light or whites, they are vibrant right they are very very bright uh, but on darker colors the only one that needs a white backing so like a base layer behind it is neon orange and then that way it's going to look real nice and uh and real nice for you so that one's uh the only one that differs based on a light or dark color garment uh but that's a great thing to do though is if you mention if you're putting in in the uh online designer exactly like how we did earlier where i changed the background color if I have, say, neon orange selected and I change the background color to black, Easy View is smart enough to be able to throw a warning to say, hey, you should probably put white around this. So put white as an outline around everything. Uh, and so it could back that entire design with white ink as a base layer. You have a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me, you have a little bit more opacity on the garment to allow that orange to be as bright as it absolutely should be. But all of the other neon colors, nice and opaque. And it's just necessarily because of uh, the, the the pigments that are in, in oranges or yellows have a tendency to, to be a little bit less opaque. We even add extra stuff into the ink to make them a little bit more opaque. So you don't need a base layer, say if you're just printing like white ink on a black shirt, so that it's not gonna be gray, it's gonna be nice white and opaque. Uh, but some of these other colors once you start to put too much of that uh, opaque medium on the inside of those inks, it starts to change the color too much. So to keep these nice and vibrant, there's a certain limit of what we're able to do uh, so that you have to be sure uh, that, uh, that it stays that color. So orange is the only one to take note of, but I do want to mention it. But neons are coming back. You're probably going to get requested this year to print something in neon. So be sure that you know it's coming. Have the confidence that you go, yeah, absolutely. Nope, no problem. Black shirt. White shirt, doesn't matter. It's going to look great, right? So a uh, great thing to keep on there. Now, of course, we talked about patterns a little bit. And here is a nice little Kansas City logo. But one of the trends year after year is spirit wear for professional teams without the licensing, right? So no need to go get a license from the Kansas City Royals here. We have little heart-shaped baseballs inside this nice cart. Like, I don't know, I'll say like, Maybe that's that Y2K vibe, that chunky or that groovy font uh, that's kind of handwritten. 
right? The brush stroke almost. You have your varying widths. But just like this, a pattern fill, putting all this stuff that we've, we've talked about, about, it's avoiding the team name, right? We're not saying Kansas City Royals. We're not saying KC Royals. We're not saying anything like that that's going to get us in trouble. We are using the team colors. Can't stop us from using blue, right? Blue and white. No, you can't stop me from using blue and white. We could use the city names or any airport abbreviation codes. I know in Cleveland, CLE is like, that's it. There's even a clothing company, a, a t-shirt brand here in town called CLE Clothing Company. Not Cleveland Clothing Company, CLE Clothing Company. That's the name of the of the of the brand. So you could use those airport codes as long as somebody else in your city is not using it. But you can't trademark those because they are like public public. So like like Cleveland Clothing Company, yeah, you could trademark that name. Uh, but just the use of CLE on apparel, you really cannot trademark that. So those airport codes are usually pretty safe to go for. And of course, I mentioned it already. But the use of the patterns here, nice little baseball pattern with uh, a little heart shape. Just looks absolutely incredible in there. Uh, yeah, D-A-L for Dallas. Or if you, I mean, you could spell Dallas out too if you want. Uh, but D-A-L, uh, what's, uh, yeah, the airport code for Dallas-Fort Worth Airport is what, D-T-W, I think? So, but yeah, if you want to if you want to advertise or have that brand service the entire Metroplex, but if you're like, say, doing some Cowboys merch or something like that, you're not necessarily going to say D-T-W for the Cowboys, right? You'll say Dallas uh, in that Cowboys colorway, uh, maybe with a football, no helmet with a star though, okay? Avoid that stuff, avoid that imagery. Uh, one thing for licensing, Gerben Law uh, on Google, you can find them, Gerben Law is a pretty, not fully comprehensive and has everything, but a fairly co comprehensive database of a lot of professional sports as well as colleges, because universities are almost just as stringent as Disney or the NFL or Major League Baseball or the NHL who are going to come after you. But it has all of those leagues uh, trademarks. So like one thing even, too, is you might not take into consideration is like the terms that are kind of loosely based around it. Here in Cleveland, we have the Cleveland Browns. Right. And we have the dog pound. So like you can't put dog pound on a T-shirt. The Cleveland Browns actually own the trademark for that. Uh, and so that is one thing that you might you might be like, oh, I'm going to skirt this this licensing here and not need to license dog pound because like, oh, it just says dog pound. But no, Cleveland Browns trademark that word mark uh, as it appears on merchandise. So Gerben Law, if you go in there, type in Cleveland Brown trademarks, it's probably like the first thing that's showing up on Google if the team website is not showing up right there. Uh, but you're able to see what they have trademarked, what you would need to license, which in most cases is for small decorators like like us, even if you have a mid-size shop, getting that licensing to sell that apparel is just incredibly expensive and so much of a hassle that it's just so much easier to just avoid the license and kind of skirt around it. Casey Swagger here from Kansas City, uh, and every everything she does is absolutely so tastefully well done that she gets away with almost all, I think she gets away with all of it, uh, and it's not infringing on any Kansas City sport. Saw a whole bunch of the stuff that she's doing here for the Super Bowl uh, and way to go. So uh, if you have a favorite team this weekend, uh, root them on uh, and and have a good time eating wings or or whatever you're going to do. Pizza, wings, uh, Gerben. Uh, very close, Allison. Uh, it is G-R-B-E-N, like Gerber, but I think it, it ends in an N. Uh, but yeah, type that into Google and has a great uh, database. Most of the time, if you type in a professional sports team and trademarks, it is the first result that comes up as their database. Some of it is outdated and some of them have like expiration dates that have expired uh, and they don't say if they've been renewed or not. Odds are professional sports teams are going to renew it uh, as they move forward. I think even like we had the Cleveland Indians just switch the name over to Cleveland Guardians. They still own all of those trademarks and licensing for the Cleveland Indians. So you cannot use that name uh, because the brand still owns it, even though they do not produce merch for it anymore. They still own it so they could protect the integrity of their new brand, the Guardians. Make sense? Make sense. So great tips to put in there. Um, yes, Brittany, bring it. <laughs> I am going just a little long. We're right here at the end. We're in the home stretch. Uh, just a couple more slides right here. Literally like two slides left. One of the trends here that I talked about too is sleeve prints. So not just short sleeves like we see the Disney one right there. And that's a great example of, hey, here's a generic looking uh, castle, not the Disney castle. 
generic looking castle, right? We have the 50 anniversary that they celebrated last year at Disney right there. It just says 50 anniversary. Looks good in that Walter Graff font, right? But it's not actually infringing on any Disney copyrights. We're not using the Mickey Mouse ears. We're not using any characters themselves. We're not using uh, the Disney name in that Walter Graff font. We're using the family name going on vacation here. So super, super. Michelle, thank you for dropping that uh, that that link down there in the chat. Um, so here, we're talking sleeve prints. Now, I kind of want to walk through from the top left. We'll go down and all the way over. I know I already talked about that licensing when I jumped in a little too early, uh, but that top left one, right? Bicep prints on long sleeves, incredibly popular. Now, the best way to do that is I like to go from the shoulder seam and measure down, and usually it's about four fingers to five fingers down, and it's going to put the print right here, right on my bicep, right where it needs to be, right? That's going to be fine for medium to probably like a 2X sizing, extra small or small. You want to even probably go up to that four finger or three finger as those sleeves are just going to be a little bit shorter. But that's a great way, great spot to put some branding. I'm actually planning on doing a shirt. Uh, if it's not going to be tomorrow, it's going to be this weekend that I'll be printing. Uh, and we're going to be putting the bicep print right on there. Now, I am using the leg and sleeve plant to make it really, really super easy. But if you don't have anything like that, you could actually get away using a mouse pad and insert it into there just takes a little bit of time. Uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of sleeves, which I have a feeling that sleeve prints, especially short sleeve prints, are going to be incredibly popular this year. Uh, and you're going to get requested to do them quite often, whether they're branding or additional stuff like this, additional print locations from your customers. So just there uh, that it's going to probably be worth it to pick up one of those leg and sleeve platens if you have a press that could take it. The original just single leg and sleeve platen is okay. If you have a fusion, if you have an auto clam, you are not going to be able to thread onto it. So get the dual leg and sleeve platen. It's not that much more expensive uh, and just way easier to work with. I even recommend the dual leg and sleeve if you do have a fusion and could could afford that. Crystal, do we have sparkle or glitter prints? Yes, absolutely glitter. Uh, and so we actually have several different kinds. Um, I'm going to pull the color selector swatch book out just one more time. Right here at the back, you see our glitter colors. So you can see how glittery and shiny those are, right? And that's the glitter transfers. Uh, we also have pearl prints in here as well. Um, hopefully that I do have them. Nope, maybe not. They are in here somewhere. Maybe, maybe not. But we have pearl prints, and then we also have like metallic colors that are that are interspersed in here in our goof proof. So you can see this one, maybe not with the light. I don't know if you can see it all that well. But there is a metallic silver on there. We have a metallic gold. Uh, as well. Let's see what else. Could I pull anything? Yeah. So here's like our metallic gold, this bottom color right here. You could probably see the shimmer in the metallic gold a little bit better um, in the light, but I still might be blowing it out. So um, Evelyn Puff coming in neon colors. I haven't seen all the colors. We're supposed to keep that a secret too, that, that we're going to have more colors of Puff coming out, but shh. Uh, yes, I believe uh, that we will. Uh, may, there may be neon colors in that. So stay tuned. That's all I could say. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, the castle uh, in that font, Jessica asked, what's the castle font name? Um, is uh, Waltograph. So like Walt Disney, but Waltograph. Um, that one's in there. Yeah. Nancy, thank you for answering that. Absolutely for perfect. Um, reflective prints. We don't necessarily have reflective, but we do have foil. Uh, it's a two-step application. So uh, you put the adhesive down and then you take a foil sheet, put it over and repress on top of it, peel it away. The foil sticks to where the uh, the ink is. Everything else just picks right back up. But yes, there are foil prints. You can check out all of that on transferexpress.com. Uh, in the example here, bottom left. So we're on the, on the bottom left of our screen here now. Uh, the logos. Logos going down a long sleeve. I'll roll my sleeve down. Separate logos, you see it all the time from streetwear to like motorsports like this. And again, what what is that? It's a checkered pattern in the background there. It's coming up on everything. Uh, I mean, for a racing shirt like this, you would expect to see a checkerboard pattern. So that makes sense because it's the flag, right? Um, way to take that win. <laughs> but uh, over here on the side, like how we have sponsors listed down, you'll see that from streetwear, even to athletic booster clubs uh, or even some other like you'll see like uh, my, my daughter even has a shirt. It looks very like streetwear, -y, but it's like butterflies and it's just different color butterflies that go down. Very similar to how those logos look. Then, of course, uh, the Sullivan 22, you see uh, just the standard down the sleeve print. All, all right there. Now that is a everything fit on a gang sheet from the center, center chest design to all of the sleeve logos to that big long sleeve logo. 
um, all right there and uh, um, and all down there. So as it, as it all goes down in the long sleeve version, uh, and that's a great that's a it actually brings a great topic up to just be able to put uh, your I'm essentially cheating that sleeve. So instead of being it directly right on the center line, so that I need a specialty platen for it, I actually just use the printer's fold or the, you know, the mill fold where it comes down straight from that, that shoulder seam. And you could usually see a crease in it. I just lay the sleeve flat, a double layer just on top of the platen and print as close to that seam as possible. And then when worn by the user, it actually still looks like right, it's right on the edge. If anything, it leans a little bit forward. So it's more visible. Looks great. Uh, of course, the 50th anniversary that we have on the, uh, on the license free trademark avoiding Disney shirt there for the family that's traveling. So you see that we're bringing everything together here uh, in use cases that you're probably going to see yourself over the past year. And then of course, I'll hide my picture right here and you could see right behind that Capital Technologies, right down there on the cuff on a long sleeve is all set, you're all set right there. Um, Arnister asks, what would the size of the logos going down the sleeve be? I believe all of those were sized to three and a half inches wide, but you would not want to go any wider than about four inches wide. So three and a half is going to give it that nice, uh, good aesthetic that's going to look like it's it's filling out the space well uh, and not being too tiny. So three and a half to four inches. Um, yeah, absolutely right there. Um, if using long text logo on the sleeve, which direction does it go? This is a hotly debated topic. I actually had this discussion in Long Beach, had the discussion with some uh, team members here at Transfer Express just a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago, uh, and there's a couple ways to do it. So usually you always want to read from the top down. Now, there are some people who say, and tattoo artists are one for this too, that if you have printing on both sleeves, when you cross your sleeves like this, that it should be legible, right? But sometimes it goes all the way up. And then if it's crossed like this, it's actually reading the word starts here and reads left to right. So I might be reversed on your screen or I might be right side. I don't know what I, how I look. I know that I'm, I'm backwards on mine. So you would start here and start reading that way. Same here. You would start on this way and start reading that way. However, when you look at it, then when you're just standing, so the majority of the time you're standing, right, that it's reading from bottom up and it kind of looks upside down. So a lot of cases, just like this one, the word, if it's just one word on a sleeve and it's in that vertical orientation, myself and a lot of other printers included, and maybe we could have this debate right here, right? That I go read top down. So the word starts up and the word, and it reads down. So even, you know, sometimes you could get away with that. And then it's vertical text. Like you actually have the letters like baselined and so it's not like a word like this but at this case on one sleeve having it read down i feel like yeah top down makes more sense uh, uh, the hotly debated topic was the tattoo artist who was like no it should always read right to left like this but like i wouldn't if i had a tattoo on my arm that went up i would want it to be readable most of the time when i'm just standing there right top down because otherwise like you have people tilting their head like what does that say it's much easier to read top down even when it's sideways uh, than a vertical format. Top down, top down. My people coming to the rescue. Thank you guys. Cause I got yelled at for this. <laughs> and I mean, it was, it was a friendly debate, but I got, I got some yelled at. So, so yes, top down, top down. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, lower sleeve, all that stuff on there. So you see these popular for all types of markets and everything else. So the last thing here is marketing your business. This is a show special here. We do not give this offer away. This is our Easy Prints Marketing Kit. I think Kathy called it out a little while ago uh, that <laughs> we're still having a debate for it. But Kathy called it out uh, probably at this point 50 minutes ago and talked about get the marketing kit. Number one, this right here is a $20 value. So this idea, this color color selector swatch book that I mentioned and I've referenced now three times just in this webinar is 20 bucks alone. For, for 15 bucks, you could get this whole kit. Now, this is just a show special. Mike will put the chat. Mike will put the link in the chat right here. Um, and uh, yeah, ab, like this is a special, special, special offer. This kit never goes on sale because if you convert one customer, one customer, that's all it takes. If you convert one customer, this kit just paid for itself. $35, $15 shipping. You get the idea. You get this, the color selector swatch book, right? You get $15 off your next order. So the shipping's free right there, right? So $35, 
This is a $20 value right here. Now, you may have noticed throughout the entire presentation that a lot of these trending styles, the kind people are my people, that Kent County Arts Festival, uh, even the, the little Shady Creek one that's right there, all echo all of these trends that we looked at. The 2023 one right there uh, in the top right on that red shirt, all of those echo a lot of these trends that we just talked about. These, all of those pictures right there are full-size transfers that you get with this kit. So it comes into this entire traveling showroom for you and your business to immediately get relevant and immediately be showing off all of the trending styles and these design trends that we just talked about for, well, the past two hours. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. It's just so much information that we had to go over here today. Um, so that for you guys here still hanging out, absolutely right here. Um, and, and this kit is for you. So not only... Do you get all of these display transfers that I'm showing you right up there at the top, right? You get a $15 off coupon. You get this color selector swatch book that's $20 by itself. And then I want to see if I have one up here is the easy prints idea book, right? So this is last year's version, but new this year's version is check that out. When I talk about using this book to sell more apparel, that's exactly what it does. Now, this book is filled with a whole bunch of artwork that you could browse with your client. This is the old cover from last year, but essentially you can see the new cover right there in the webinar uh, and your name is at the bottom. So your customer does not know Transfer Express exists. And when they go, I don't really know what I'm looking for, but I'll know when I see it. Like graphic design is not Netflix, but with this idea book, it is thumb through every single page as they're, they're, they're uh, classified as sports or school or whatever it needs to be and go through and they're like, yeah, that one right there, QFB 234, just like uh, everything of what I was showing you in this webinar here today, find that, double click on it, change it to the school name and you are done. You just offered graphic design services for absolutely free. This book by itself, I I think is well worth the entire price of a full price kit at 50 bucks itself. Because uh, using this in conjunction with EasyView Online Designer is just going to help you sell more apparel than anything else. So just because you guys hung out all day today and I want to help your business out, we're offering our trade show special, uh, which we don't get to offer all of the time. Uh, so we're giving it for $35, this entire kit. Comes with a whole bunch of those samples, some posters that you could hang up, a sticker, because yes, we offer stickers too, and all of that brand new artwork that's designed in there. Some of the images that I used in this webinar actually came from the idea book as well. So when your customer is browsing through that, they see the samples that you brought, even if you're just starting your t-shirt business, it looks like you've been in business for 30 years and you have the capabilities of a shop that is 20 people, 30 people with this entire marketing department, when in all reality, it's just you. We truly want to help your business. We want to see your business succeed. And everything right here in this kit is built to make you have the best year ever if you don't already have one of these kits. Now, if you do have a marketing kit from uh, a couple of years past, maybe now's the time to grab one at a discount and get the newest version. Because of course, you get all of that new trending artwork and the idea book is updated with all of that new trending artwork as well. Uh, so all of that stuff in there. Um, it, and so Donna says, I ordered the marketing kit, but I thought my company name was supposed to be on the idea book. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Your company name, there is a spot uh, you'll see on the web page uh, that actually has a little spot that says like personalization. That's where you put your company name. Uh, if you just ordered it and you didn't put anything in that personalization spot, immediately email info at transferexpress.com and say, hey, I want to make sure my name appears on my book like this and type it in there. We're going to make sure it gets on there and gets shipped out to you. Um, so this, this entire kit comes in this big box. And like I mentioned, as soon as you buy it and it ships, $15 is immediately credited to your account. And you could use that on transfers. So when you're doing Ultra Color Max transfers, that could pay for quite a bit of printing all for free right there. The idea book by itself is, I don't know, I could look that up. Um, and see exactly how much the idea book is by itself. I want to say it's like 20 bucks because it is personalized to your business so that you could use it to pitch uh, Transfer Express. I mean, you could use it to pitch those designs so that you could have it in there. Let's see the idea book by itself. And Mike's probably going to beat me to the punch on this. The idea book is 15 bucks. So the idea book by itself is 15 bucks. Uh, so for $20 more, you get all of the display samples and the color selector swatch book, which costs 20 bucks by itself. So um, that is actually 102 
physical screen printing screens is what it takes to make this this color selector swatch book. Uh, so it isn't cheap to, to create this thing. We don't make any money on this kit at full price and we actually lose money. But I want to help you guys out. I, I am fully dedicated here uh, behind all of the content that we do at Transfer Express Installs to helping you and your business succeed. Uh, but we are all wrapped up. If you guys haven't already got a kit, um, maybe Mike could throw the, yep, Mike just threw the link right back in there. Uh, if we missed that link and it got buried down in there. Uh, but if there's any other questions right here, I'm more than happy to answer them. But we're always available, info at transferexpress.com. Uh, on the phone, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Uh, you could visit us at all of those trade shows that I mentioned at the top of the show um, or check it out. Uh, if you go to transferexpress.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, click on events, and uh, you could see all of that stuff. So, Carolyn, thank you uh, for hanging out. I'm glad we could help here. Um, mentioned it before, would love the color selector on black as well. Terry, yes, that's actually something that we're working for towards. Um, if it's not going to be printed on black, uh, accompanying the book itself would be the swatches that you could print on any color apparel. So like if you wanted to make your own like t-shirt that just had all the colors printed out on it, um, that, that you would be able to do that. But we're working on that. We're trying to do it. John, thank you. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, yes. Uh, very in-depth presentation, Hannah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, uh, if you want to get in, con in contact with the Facebook group, go on Facebook uh, and it's Easy Prince Dealers Group. Uh, Easy Prince Dealers Group. Let me see. Uh, Mike even might be able to link to it, uh, but it is verified. So we make sure that you're a Transfer Express uh, customer and have an active account. And then we get you in there as well. Um, and there's some group rules. So if you don't follow the rules, we, we do uh, moderate the group very well because we want it to be a very welcoming and uh, just collaborative space. So there's some people who go in there and start saying some not so nice things and we remove them or we'll warn them. We'll warn we'll usually we'll give them a warning in the benefit of the doubt. Like, hey, don't know if you saw the group rules, but we do want to maintain the integrity of how helpful this group is. Uh, so so that becomes a thing on it as well. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jennifer, oh, we're remembering having a hard time posting in the group. Uh, I know that that things, it, it's when somebody sees it, uh, myself included. I, my, I approve posts. Um, uh, most of our, our marketing director here and our social media person does as well. Um, so it may just take a little while. Or if the post does not adhere to the guidelines of the group, it will not get approved. So that's the only thing. Just make sure that it's all adhering to the guidelines of the group. Um, I just bumped my microphone. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, just just check into that. Um, I'll uh, I'll look in to see if there's any pending ones in there from you that I could approve right after I get off this webinar right here um, and get going. So um, yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about wanting to put all the colors on a shirt. That's one way to do it. Um, Olivia, ready to start your t-shirt business? This is the space to do it. This is the spot to do it. Kathy, thank you so much. Terry says, made one for myself in ultra color and it's been great. We've actually seen a lot of customers do that. If that was you in the Easy Prince Steelers group posting about it, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Easy Prince Decorators. Carol, thank you. Easy Prince Decorators group. Uh, all right there. Please post a pic of you in the crop top if I do rock it. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I want photo evidence of it. Could I, could I Photoshop it so that I have six pack abs when I do that <laughs> Oh, Dawn, a Transfer Express customer for over 10 years and always learns new stuff. Thank you. Because that is one thing that I've been in the industry for 10 years and a lot of it is experience. So we just need to make sure that, that we're helping everybody out. Um, let's see. Um, do I do presentations, solo presentations for companies? Um, Ashley, I do not uh, do solo presentations, but if you come to an event, I'm more than happy to, to, uh, to help you out one-on-one. -on -one. We could, we could grab a little meeting room. We could chat about stuff, uh, or just chat at the booth. I'm more than happy to help you out. Um, Let's see. Blair asks, will I be able to watch the entire vid after the fact? Like if you want to revisit, yes, we will email out a YouTube link to pretty much replay of me presenting this right here. So you'll have me in this little picture down here as well. Um, awesome. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, swatch book to match color. Uh, is there a swatch book for apparel as well to match the color tones to transfer express? So those swatch books uh, vary from manu manufacturer to manufacturer and they get gigantic. They're huge. Like eight fold out brochures. So uh, we, you could contact like Gildan specifically and request one, but I believe because they are actual like cut up things. Uh, yeah. Um, Got to get in there uh, from, uh, okay. So Jennifer, I see, I see it from uh, that, that I'll look from your husband there. Um, 
Mark, the link for the shirt tag creator there, that's the uh, the tag along platen. Hopefully Mike's able to put that in there. Uh, Lori, the best way to store transfers in a climate controlled environment without swings in temperature or humidity. So uh, in like a like office right here where it is climate controlled 24 seven and it never fluctuates from probably like 68 to 72 degrees, a relative humidity of probably like 20% because it is air conditioned and we don't have the doors open. It's not a garage or anything. That is exactly where you want them. Don't put them in your car. Don't put them in your garage where the garage door is opening or it's not heated or insulated or cooled. Put them in like not even a hot room. Don't put them in a hot, put them in like a room that's like 72 degrees all the time, like your pantry <laughs> right there. That's where you want it to be. Um, let's see. Uh, the book in digital e uh, format. Um there is, yes. So there is a digital for, uh, format book. It is not customized to your business, but it does say Easy Prints, which the only thing you'll find on Easy Prints is just the catalog um, because it's the Easy Prints idea book. Uh, and there's Easy Prints in the Easy View online designer. Uh, and so it does still kind of hide it from your customers, uh, but that's available at easyprints.com. Um, I believe we actually do have a PDF version if you buy the kit that we can email to you so you can email it out to customers. And it also comes with a black and white version that is completely unbranded. So you can even leave with your customers instead of giving them your nice binder version uh, that you could get it out there. So um, can this chat be up a bit so that we could go back and look at questions? Yes, Lori, uh, the best way to do that is just keep this window open even after the webinar ends. Um, and so you could be able to go through that. Laura, just join the Facebook group. Excited. Awesome. Well, I took up two hours of your guys' day. Um, I hope it was incredibly valuable. I had an absolute blast presenting it to you. Uh, and if there's anything else at any time that you want to hear from me, uh, just, just go and comment on any YouTube video on the Transfer Express channel. I personally answer every single one of the comments every single day. Um, and so that is your direct line to Dave. And also, if you see any, uh, if you have any specific questions, like how how do I decorate on this specific jacket or something like that? What transfer type to use? You'll probably see a video coming up because more, if you have the question, odds are more decorators have it. But I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out today. Really appreciate you here at transferexpress.com. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, 2023, if you are still here right now, you are absolutely dedicated. You're in the right mindset. You're in the right space to better yourself and your brand. So more power to you. I am behind you in every single last bit of capability of anything I could do to help your business out. I am here to support you. But until next time, I'm Dave. Happy pressing, guys. Have a great day.